what's up, B? Watching game, having a bud. True, true. What's up? Yo, who's that? Yo, yo, pick up the phone. Hello. What's that? What's up? Yeah. Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie. Hello? What's up? What's up? Yo, who's that? Yo, yo, pick up the phone. Hello? What's that? What's up? Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie! Yo. What's up? What's up? Got of candles, blow them out. She got bunch of candles, blow them out. Everybody at the party starts to gather round. Puffin', puffin', and blow them out. It's your birthday, let's get crazy. I'll take the day off, they're gonna fire me. I came to pin the tail on the donkey and shake it to the Richter scale. Jobs are party. You got bunch of candles, blow them out. You got bunch of candles, blow them out. Everybody at the party starts to gather round. Puffin', puffin', and blow them out. Andy! Andy, it's just the two of us. Just you and me and my Black Rock coffee. Let me get some artwork done. Why does my lighting look weird? I don't know what's going on in here. Uh, Ace is here. Ace, uh, congratulations. You're sixth. Third, fourth, fifth. That was weird. I froze up. That's right. I'm going to draw. Got to finish this page. I got uh, two pages left for this. And then it's. And then I'll ninja launch a hard copy of it. I got a trading card, too. I got a trading card for it as well. Andy, question for you. I'll let you. I'll let you say yes or no. What's up, Jay? Welcome to Andy's birthday celebration. Celebrating early. Seven months early. Andy, you remember I did the uh, the Jim Lee homage, the Rage Tally. Should I use that for a variant for this thing? Should I use it? These are the last two. Okay, so this... So I've been cheating a little bit on these. Um, that's two pages. I'm using an 1117, so I did two pages there. Uh, this one, I, I got to finish this one. This one. And then the one that I'm a little over halfway done with right here, right? And the other night on stream... I finished this one, but Phil wasn't showing it off. He was too busy showing uh, pictures of chicks. Uh, where's my Where's my script for the trailer? What's up, Polly's? <clears throat> Oh, Andy, yeah, Andy saw that. I think Andy saw that. Yeah, Andy's coming down. We're going to go see, uh, we're going to see Chevelle. I'm going to have to send the ladies home for that one, though. They're not going to be able to sit it out. They can barely make it through churches. Oh, speaking of, I got my, my, uh, my church's concert shirt here. This was 
$28. I think the venue keeps 14 of it, so they didn't make anything. Andy says yes. Okay, so I will. So um, I'm thinking I'm going to do a... I'm going to do a Frank Miller homage cover for one of them. And then I'll use that Jim Lee homage for the other. Yeah, that's a that wraparound right there, Jay. I'm not taking it out. Uh, Sailor already claimed it. He already claimed this one. He saw it. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, yeah, man, I'm almost done with this thing, dude. Yeah, uh, two. Yeah, I got to scan all these two. Two pages complete. The, I'll be done today. Two of those. And then uh, the guy I'm going to finish right now on stream. And then... Uh, yeah, tonight, I think I'm streaming tonight. Let me check. I think I'm I'm, I'm not on my channel, though. Here, I'll, I'll tell you guys. Let's see. Oh, no, I'm not. I lied. I thought I was streaming with Smeddy tonight. I'm not. I'm, I'm streaming on the 23rd. Shelby's all like, they're just supposed to be headshots, bro. And then double... Look, dude. Headshot zombies are boring. Super boring. So, yeah. Pull out. Pull a Actually, no, I won't. I'm not pulling this out. I want to. I gotta make sure it might be a ten. I'll pull it up over here. Let me see. Let me see. I'll open it up in Photoshop and show you. What's going on, guys? Are you all unemployed or just Jay? Right, where's my... Is it my... No, it's not there. Hold on. I could have sworn I called it something else. Uh... Oh, here it is. I hate when I do that. Did I not scan it on this? What the hell? What did I scan it to? There's a Ghost Rider. Oh, I did. I didn't go down far enough. I found it. Don't worry. Don't worry, Jay. I found it. So... Here, I'll share. I'll show you. Andy, if you didn't see it. Um... What's up, Phil? Window. Can't see around this camera. There you go. That's the cover. That's it right there, man. Just a headshot. Hashtag. Just a headshot. Let me zoom in. I'll show you kind of some detail here. Is that zooming in? Yeah, I guess it is. It's weird to see like a full RGB scan. You could see like the different tints of the ink with like the red and all that. You can see the mess. My gun looks okay. I did a uh, 
I kind of did that Wolf's that Wolf's thing, you know, like when when hands look boring, you just sort of hit them with a bunch of uh, like rapid like rapid line. Yeah, gave him a little divot. Gave him a little. Uh, he's got a little stogie sticking out of his shoulder there. It's not really a stogie. It looks kind of like a uh, like what do you call it? Rebar. All right, there's that. I'm gonna flip it around. Uh, let's get this done. I want to get uh, I want to get this piece done. Damn it, Shelby. See, Andy says nice. That's nice, bro. I had two. I had two drinks today. Um, this is my second. They gave me. I only drank half of the other one though. It tastes kind of burnt. Went to Black Rock Coffee. It's just a black and white. Oh, nice. But the girl made a, a hot one. And it wasn't very good. But anyways, she, she just gave it to me. She she realized when they handed it out, she goes, uh, she goes, oh, no, that's not right. Like she, before I even said anything, she already knew it. I'll show you, though. I took a nice little photo of it. I put it on Snap. I think I put it. Did I snap it? I did not. I snapped El Charo. There you go. See? Two drink. That's what's up. I'm gonna charge my phone. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Gonna fix the face. I made his eyeball too tiny, and I put a giant glob of white out over it. Now I gotta, I gotta shave it down, shave it back. The eyeball looks—he looks like a Charlie Brown character. What's up, Carbon? Jay's giving me the business. If it's not a snap. It didn't happen. This is Mark Pingren. I keep Snapchat because I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this. I, I have a. What is it? A Galaxy 23? There's something about the Snap... The Snapchat camera is very different from the standard app they give you. And it actually takes better photographs. It's the weirdest thing. They're like, the clarity is better. The color is better. Whatever the, the presets are on it, it's awesome. It's really cool. Oh, awesome one noticed... Oh, she was skinny again. Unfortunately, not as skinny as I was. All right. Yeah, I got to shave this down. Like I said, this is, uh, that eyeball is just ri ridiculous. We're going to shave it. Shave it, shave it. Yeah, I shaved it too much the first time, and it, um, it made him look like, it's pretty good right there. It's close enough. That looks way better than a dot. Dwag, Dwag says S22 Ultra here. Who is on crack? That's right. Got crack pack in the, his house. I miss you, Dwag. Miss you. I like when Dwag comes around. All right, so now I'm gonna ignore you guys so I can finish this crap. I'll look at chat once in a while though. It's kind of a small, a small face thing going on here. So I'm, I'm gonna not really dive in with the brush until I hit his torso, I think. Maybe his arms, but. Yeah, I def that four is dying on me. I definitely don't want to hit it with a brush. I don't, I don't have the, uh, the confidence of hitting these itty bitty lines. These are like twos, ones and twos. What's up, Bemis? Yeah, so I might leave some spotted blacks for me to hit with a brush and just keep those a little loose, but no. Uh,
I want to see Jay Ryan do a Frank Miller style drawing. Like, just negative space, at all costs, avoid all line art, you know what I'm saying? Who else wants to see that? It's kind of liberating, and it's also frustrating, Jay, because um, that part of me really wants to, like, just draw, like, crosshatch, and I can't. Because it's like, it's it kind of goes against it a bit, right? Like, the, the closest I got to it here is, like these these broken lines like the texture on the shoulder pads and then i think a few headshots i think there's a couple headshots that i did it too oh this one here i definitely broke my rule if you look at that headshot that top of his head right there i did it a little bit of feathering but man it's like just trying to use just straight like straight up black you know um it's hard it's a little a little more difficult than it than you would think <clears throat> And then this one, this was the top panel to page six. And then um, I'm going to include a trading card. So here's the card. Uh, the back artwork for it is this of some text. And then uh, the front of the card will be this right here. And I might do two versions. I might do like an all red one and then just a regular one like this with maybe just like a dark gray behind it with just the eyes white. I don't, I don't really know. I'm still, I'm going to play with it in Photoshop, kind of see what's up with it but um and this is very obviously loosely based on that death blow one cover jim lee just did a close-up face and it literally had a deleter going right down the center and it was like half black half white you know um but yeah like like trying to <laughs> i did it right there yeah trying not to uh trying to keep yourself from like rendering with you know tonal values and, uh hatching is hard as F, bro. Red cap man, how are you doing? Got a red cap here. Got Bemis. Awesome one. Oh. Oh, use toothpaste. No. Uh, I don't, I'm trying to keep my artwork ants free. Ants will eat toothpaste, right? Doesn't toothpaste have sugar in it? I feel like toothpaste actually has sugar in it. Uh, I I get grief about it once in a while. brush my teeth i don't use like i don't use like crest and that stuff because i was told um i had a lot of dental work done guys like years ago um when i had cancer i had throat cancer and a buddy of mine i uh, was a dentist he did a bunch of work for me and uh he was telling me back then to kind of like avoid the big name brand um toothpaste you know he was he just had he had different reasons why and I, I listened to him i'm like all right man he's like yeah just do what you're doing it's fine but just be aware like it's still bad it's still it doesn't it's it might be better just, but it's still not good right it's still not a good way to um yeah there was some brand he wanted me to try i never got on board because it, it tastes like crap uh it's got like a brown box i don't remember the name of it but he wanted me to on that and I, I i got it once and i tried it and i was like oh yeah this yeah man i tried it and then i back in my head i'm like that was terrible i did try it though chat in a second here and you do have to kind of indicate stuff sometimes if i don't put these little like tick lines to kind of indicate the mask it's it's going to get completely lost that's one thing that kind of sucks about this style is you do have to sometimes 
it's unavoidable. You got to break the rules once in a while, unless you could figure out a way to not break it, which I can't figure out sometimes. I try not to overthink it. I just kind of go with it. Carbon's here. Yeah, Carbon. I think Tom's. Tom's is one he had told me. That's one you wipes the hippie. Yeah, that's the one that I used. I think it was Tom's. Yeah. I didn't like it though. That's the one I'm talking crap about, Carbon. Jay, you should do. I want you to do something like this, man. Do one piece where it's like this. Make it a dude, though. You know, you could chisel it out better. It's. I think it's a little harder to do. Like, if it's females, you're just gonna be basically adding like eyeshadow, maybe the iris, and then like one one side of the nose. You know what I'm saying? Like a drop shadow. Um. Red Catman says I liked Rob Liefeld's version of the Death Blow work when he did Shadowhawk. Um. Oh, you know. Something interesting about that. Um, I mean, it's not like it's a secret anymore. Uh, way back when I worked there, he uh, so he did the layouts. Uh, he did the layouts to that. Um, that was actually Carl Allstetler's work. Carl, who who used to X X uh, Wildstorm. Uh, so Rob Rob did uh, some some layouts, and then like the finish the finish brushwork and that. Uh, yeah, that was Carl Allstetler. And then after that, uh, Carl was given the the ongoing work for Bloodstrike. And then after he left Bloodstrike, uh, John Fang did some fill-ins, then took over the book pretty much full-time before Extreme uh, went under. But um, yeah, man, that was Carl Allstetler's work, actually, which is interesting. Uh, Allstetler was kind of a utility guy. Um, but he he had a lot of other yeah you know, he had he had like actual book credits too you know he didn't just do finishes I think when I came on board I kind of took over a lot of the stuff that um, Carl used to get stuck with with Rob as far as like finished work you know having to finish up uh, take stuff to across the finish line with pages you know um, yeah, a lot of it gets, Rob. Rob surrounded himself with a lot of talent that was more than willing to hook him up. So those days are gone, but good times, man. Good paychecks. That's what people always ask me. Like, oh, what do you miss about the '90s? I'm like, the checks. Literally, that's what I miss the most. The checks were liberating. It gave it gave you a sense of like. You felt comfortable experimenting with styles and stuff because it's like you could always kind of fall back on your original look that got you hired to begin with, you know. So a lot of innovation came out of the 90s. A lot of innovation. Specifically from Wildstorm, Top Cow, and Extreme. Marvel and DC, not so much. They were just copycats. They were they were hating hard on the image guys. But they were also, funny enough, emulating the hell out of them. It was interesting. They hate us because they ain't us. There was a point, too, in the 90s where there was an entire run of books called Extreme through, I think it was DC. They were hating on Rob so much. They had to make an entire run of books called Extreme. It was like Extreme this, Extreme that. Uh, what's up, Amanda? How you doing? I see Mr. Maromi is here. Hipsters want to make fun of the 90s, the era of Save Kong. It, ex it expanded everything for sure. Look, dude. If, if 90s comics didn't exist, you guys probably wouldn't be here watching me. I'd probably be teaching full-time somewhere, not ever having done nothing in comics. Um, yeah, it's, it's weird. We got a lot of 90s, like, 90s comics. Hate. And, and the thing is, too, 90s wasn't, like, an era, like, music where, like, there was actually very few talented people in the 90s. There wasn't a lot. You had a lot of uh, 
you had a lot of people trying to emulate what the more popular artists were doing, but they were all doing it very badly. They weren't they weren't doing it well, or else they would be remembered today for it, right? And they're not. People still talk about Jim Lee and McFarlane and Rob and Eric because no one else could do what they did. Not to the same level. The Qberts tried. They kind of failed. They had to find their own way. Mid two thousands. But, you know, that was all studio. It's the studio telling people. Uh, there was a point, too, I was talking to someone about this. Uh, even, like, like what's it, Herb? Herb Tramp? There's there's an entire book he did where he literally was trying to ape Rob style, and it was, like, the worst. It was actually kind of sad seeing the guy that, you know, drew the first appearance of Wolverine trying to ape Liefeld, and he just completely failed at it. It was probably the worst book he's ever drawn. All right, let's see here. But those dudes were doing what they had to do, trying to keep the kids interested. Marvel books. Yeah, a lot of artists. You, you guys would never know if if uh, if the Image Boys didn't do what they did. You would never know J. Scott Campbell. You would never know Travis Chere. You would never know Stephen Platt. That's a fact. Because if they never left. Marvel, Stephen Platt would have never got a job. Uh, you'd never know Frega. You would have had all the the image guys that were getting hired when they were learning. Ryan Benjamin, like I said, Travis Chere, a lot of the coloring departments. Uh, computer coloring did not level up until the image guys took initiative to make sure that their books we're stomping all over Marvel and DC, right? They created coloring departments. There was a point where Top Cow was actually the best colors in comics. Uh, Mark had facilitated a studio for colorists and people were leaving to go work there because of how awesome and how much they could learn with Mark's with Mark's people and then uh there's a little bit of head hunting you know that's how Liefeld got uh uh rest in peace Drew Posada and Alex Posada Drew you know I don't know if you guys know this Drew Posada has got a twin brother Alex and Alex was a fucking phenomenal colorist as well He had a uh, Drew actually. So this is so I used to hang out with Drew all the time. Uh, I would go back. Uh, Extreme Color. Extreme Color was not a studio. It was the backside next to um, Danny Mickey's wife Shannon used to do payroll for us, and she uh, right past her desk you'd have an entrance there was like a there was like a a waiting room area for anyone coming to visit the studio and then we had um extreme color was just the room adjacent to that down the hall and i used to go back there and bug the hell out of uh like andre like dre andre karnov and uh, uh there's just really good colors back there uh, donald skinner uh, he was pretty much, I think, I don't want to call him an art director. He was he was basically running the show, though, uh, back with Extreme Color. But uh, Drew, who I hung out with the most, actually, um, we'd go get lunch once in a while. If I wasn't already going to lunch with, like, Larry Martyr or Liefeld or whoever. Uh, he had crazy stories about, because he started out at Top Cow. And he also did some Wildstorm stuff. Like, he had... Um, I think the first thing he ever showed me of his that was not extreme was he pulled up a file. It was a Jason Pearson card for some Wildstorm trading card set. It was like a... What's that red guy Jim Lee made up? It looks like Deadpool Pike. Is his name Pike? I think it was Pike. But anyways, he colored that. And it was it was freaking sick. It looked so cool. I just remember that. And um, 
Yeah, he he was telling me how he got um oh man, what's his name? Silvestri's old colorist. Oh, Haberlin. He got he got Brian Haberlin hired and and had to teach he was Haberlin was hired based on his acrylic paintings and they were like hey are you interested in digital colors and so they brought him on and he was trained by Drew uh Drew Posada um yeah and if you guys aren't familiar Drew 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 actually has an art book he has an art book out uh he did pass away unfortunately um I'm not sure if his brother did as well i don't i haven't spoken to alex in uh over 20 20 years easily so i'm not really sure what's going on with alex uh, i know they had a weird falling out for a little bit um but alex is also equally as talented he's just slower but he he has the same level of quality work as drew it was really weird it, it's uh it's not very often you you meet twins who are both kick ass at their thing you know it's usually like one kind of coattails on the other um but anyways yeah alex is really good as well but i never see his name on anything so i think he kind of maybe fell out of comics but yeah he was telling me that story about top cow and training there and then uh rob basically offered him more money to come over to extreme and then that's what he did he bounced he left uh, uh mark and came over to work for rob and all that so it's good times man got to got to see a bunch of innovation firsthand um yeah and again man it wouldn't have happened uh, none of that would have happened unless those those dudes left Marvel. I, I still think I think today I think comics would have still been. You probably would have had some digital stuff, but I think it would have been completely different than what we have. I, I, and I don't think it would have been for the better. Um. Uh, computers were actually like um, most people were priced out um, it the investment was just too great with little return and so you needed these companies and Marvel and DC did not facilitate that uh, they were taking advantage of hiring people that uh, the image the image guys were training to begin with so yeah, Arn Lucen and, and liquid and all that they really only exist because of life filled. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's people forget. Uh, no, no one had interest in R and Chris until uh, Rob. So I think he would just he would see some potential, and then uh, strip that potential of all of its resources. <laughs> I was I was one of them for sure. Oh, what's up, Sai Apex? What's up? Sorry, guys, I'm not, like not checking chat. Ramble, welcome to to Ramble stream. Aldis, what's up, man? Uh, congrats on the almost one k subs, says Sai. Thanks. Uh, I'm not gonna celebrate one k until I'm at twelve hundred. When I'm at 1200, I'll feel comfortable with it because, yeah. Um, last night, I was two away. And then I lost a couple overnight. But uh, I was telling Andy the other day when we streamed, I, I lost four. Like during the stream, I lost four. I think it's just accounts getting banned. I, I, I highly doubt that even 50% of my follows is like bleeding humans. You know what I mean? I think it's a lot of it's just bots or whatever. But I also feel like I should have, you know, like 5,000 subs or so. There was a point, my old Instagram, um, there was a point where I had, what was it? Like 15,000 subs or yeah, it was weird. 
uh, and a very high volume of those was actual real people from conventions because I'd be like, hey, I'll give you a discount right now if you add me on Insta. Like I was literally that guy. And that's how I got a bunch. And then they don't unsub. And then they, you know what I mean? They don't unfollow. Um, so I think I need to start doing that again. Now that I'm guest to do a couple shows. I got a couple events here. I got... I think, I think it's this weekend. Is it this weekend or next? No, 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 it's next weekend. I think I, I still got like uh, seven days to get some missions done. And then, let me see, actually, I'm going to check. Let me check. If he announced it, then I can tell you guys, because um, he had a couple other probables. Um, he's got an open door policy for Jim Lee as well, so I, you never know... Stranger things have happened because Malvi's a he's a very cool cat. Known him for over a decade. He actually was the first shop. I was shopping in his store and he ran up to me and asked me if I would please do a signing at his store. And I was like, what? How do you even know who I am? Ooh. Okay. Oh, he's got sketch cards for his show. That's cool. Um, Andy, are you still here? It looks like, uh, hey, you know Ben, uh, Glenn Denning is going to be there, dude. Andy used to work, Andy actually, Andy used to live in Mesa. He used to work at a comic shop uh, 30 years ago. Yeah, Andy, if you're still here, man, uh, Glenn Denning is going to be there, too. Looks like he's doing some sketch cards. Yeah, he's only announced me and Frega. He put up uh, Dan's commission list. Here, let's see. I'll share this. Let's see here. Um, where is my... Can I share this? Yeah, I'll share this. All right, so... Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, my, my commission list, I told him I'm only taking 10. I'm doing 11. I personally am doing 11 17s at 125, single character, minimum background, three quarter view, sometimes full view. It depends on the character, what I'm comfortable with. It's kind of like a, my, my thing, but, um, I'm doing 125 because that's what I'm comfortable with personally. That's an 11 17 full pencil. Uh, Frega's list here is he's doing 150 bus and Dan's Dan's stuff is fully inked, right? Mine is not, mine's pencil. Uh, Dan's doing 150 for a bust. I think that's a nine by twelve. Uh, half figures are 250, and then his full figure commissions are 500. I imagine that's probably on an 1117 or whatever you know, whatever it would fit on nicely. Um, even if it's an 1114, I would say that's acceptable. Uh, so Frigg has got that uh, Green Goblin full figure. Looks like he has a Miles Morales half and then a cable bust. A bust, um, a half figure would be like waist up and a bust would be like a shoulder shot. Like basically a little more than a head, right? You want to kind of cram as much as you can under the neck. Uh, let's see, Mike wrote... Sorry guys, I'm reading away from the screen. Uh... Can't afford a Jim Lee commission and without taking a second mortgage. Oh, that's right. Jim Lee's uh, commissions came out uh, fourteen thousand a piece at starting, and they go up to thirty-five k for eleven seventeen single character. By the way, uh, don't worry. Scottsdale Comic Book Show you got you covered. Uh, guest to honor Frega, be on hand, satisfy your original sketch needs. Uh, comic artist uh, Marissa Pope and Shelby Robertson will also be attending. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know Marissa's going to be there. She does Zenoscope covers. Uh, the 8th Scottsdale Comic Book Show will be held Sunday, April 21st. Okay, so I got a week. I got a week to knock out more stuff. 11 to 5, and it's a one-day show. Uh, affectionately known as Old Man Con. Yeah, so the reason they call it that, it's basically Arizona's version of Heroes. I'm just going to put that out there. It's, it's basically that, It's but it's a one-day version of it. Um... So yeah, there's that. What else does he say here? 
see more. Scottsdale Plaza Resort, free parking. You guys don't know how big of a deal that is. Right there. Um, myself as a vendor, I have to pay sometimes for... When I do the Phoenix Comic Con, I gotta pay 20 bucks Friday, Thursday, Friday, 20 a day. $40 to park my car on a Saturday and $30 I think it is to park my car to load out so I got four five six seven eight nine ten look so $110 in parking for me to be at a show that I'm guested isn't that wild uh you'll find plenty of old comics next Scottsdale comic book show magnificent vendors South golden age which is true bunch of vendors there a bunch of comic vendors uh, they call old man because it is it's it's older uh it's older uh uh comic shops and stuff that come in for this and then malvi has a he has a huge back stock of like his old personal stuff and from uh his old stores uh if you guys remember he had uh atomic comics was his he he used to be the biggest comic book vendor in arizona um, and then when his when his shops folded, um, there really wasn't a whole lot of uh, alternates. You had um, I started hitting up drawn to comics, and I used to do a lot of business with them, but things got a little weird over there. I had a buddy working there, and I, there was just there was like internal drama at that store, so I kind of stopped going there so much. And um, as everything was always stupid ass drama it ruins everything um but that shop was cool that shop was cool and i still recommend it i just personally don't have to go over there anymore i'll stop in there and say hi to people i mean i'll still say hi just i don't do events there anymore i had some artists got butt hurt because i was i mean i'm not kidding when i said I, I was killing it I was killing it over there pretty consistently and they were making a lot of money off of me because I had a consignment situation over there and uh, there were people that just got mad and voiced their opinion to the owner and he felt like it was possibly making him lose business of people because of jealousy and shit and so I stopped I was like that's fine dude I'm out because I me as a knee jerk thing I'm like peace out. I'm not, I'm not going to argue it, dude. Like if, if, uh, uh, these dudes that don't even really shop your store and just use you for, for a spot whenever you have an event, but they have no interest in actually spending in your shop. If that, if that takes precedent over someone that makes you thousands of dollars a month, enjoy your life, bro. Enjoy. That's real talk. Real talk from shelves Tuesday morning. What's up, Gordon? I see sailors here. Jimmy use Venmo. Uh, he wants swollen pockets. Abba, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Here, Rick, I'm gonna give you a what's up. Hold on. Here we go. I'll give you that. What's up? Yo, what's that? Yo, yo, pick up the phone. Hello. What's up? What's up? Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie. Yo. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, who's that? Yo, yo, pick up the phone. Hello? What's up? What's up? What's up? Yo, who's that? Yo, yo, pick up the phone. Hello? What's up? What's up? Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie. Yo. What's up? What's up? <laughs> Yo, do Yo. What's up? What's up? That was funny. So, um... Oh, man, I can't find it. Uh, so, Red Cat Man says, Cal Irving... Uh, it says Carl Irving. It's Cal Irving, uh, who worked on 
Chapel had a death blow filled with his heart. Yeah, Calvin. Calvin was a good guy. Also, rest in peace, uh, Calvin. Um, my son is actually named after him, believe it or not, right, Cap? I have a son who's uh, going to be 30 soon. Uh, yeah, his his chapel did have a death blow filled to it. You're 100% correct. Uh, he was hired off of an indie book he did. I don't remember the name of it. I actually was right now. I was looking up online. I was like, oh, I'm going to look this up. He got hired on a book that was a fringe death blow like literally straight out of death blow comic um and when he was working at extreme uh, that was actually my first paid gig when i moved down my first page rate gig was um rob said hey uh calvin's having some problems uh getting his pages turned in and i think it would help uh if he had an assistant and i and i thought he meant like oh like someone to come in and help ink ink stuff i was like yeah i think i can do that i've, I've tried that before and he's like no I need, I need he's like uh would you mind laying out some pages and then bring them to me so i could see what you do and so i got the script and i think it was oh man who was the writer on that was it uh oh uh, he was an in-house editor but he was also doing script writing it wasn't tom it was um Oh God, I forgot his name. But anyways, um, yeah, I did layouts for um, volume two of Chapel, not volume one, but it was for issue one and two. Um, and then I actually ended up doing issue four. I think I did issue four. Yeah, I think I did issue four. It was, it was well, I did a fill-in issue, but my fill-in issue, I don't, I probably shouldn't even promote it. Is it, I mean, when I say terrible, it's terrible um i use it for for name dropping but um they gave me they gave me nine days to finish 24 pages and that includes danny mickey and sabal inks so i basically had to finish a book in five days and i already had a full-time comic gig so it was like a nighttime thing like i literally did like eight pages a night like three nights in a row and then um just i literally and then i just shipped them straight to danny i think yeah and it was it was pretty bad anyways yeah but yeah my son my son's named after calvin uh calvin he was a good friend so unfortunately he took his own life uh but he, you know he was awesome man he got he got me into uh he's the one that got me hired by danzig he was working at at verotic on a a book called Gay Rouge, G E R O U G E. I, I think it's pronounced Gay Rouge. It's a uh, uh, a Louisiana. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. voodoo. You know, voodoo and stuff. Uh, Apex is what Shelby's a thirty year old. Son. Yeah, 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 like thirty and twenty eight. Yeah, promiscuous babysitters, bro. I wish I had a few babysitters that were. They were eights, nines. My parents used to, they used to hire some hot ones. What's up, Courtney's Fellowship of Oddballs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he passed uh, 98? Because my son is not born 96. 98? I think it was 98. I mean, it's been a while, man. I, I completely, you know, I I uh, completely forgot when it happened. Uh, I got a call from his his uh, sister, actually, is the one that called me and told me about it when it happened. Um, but I'm not really sure what his situation was because uh, he kind of went off grid. A lot of us were a little concerned because he kind of disappeared on us. Uh, this is pre-internet. This is like when you used to have $800 phone bills just to keep in contact with people, you know? And uh, I'm not kidding about that. I, I My average phone bill sometimes was $1,000. Just trying to make sure that I stay busy with Marvel and Malibu and Image and those guys. Um, I'd be interested to hear like what Marat and even Frega used to spend on their phone bills because they used to be on the phone more than I was. But there was never a time when I'd go into Dan's office when he wasn't with a phone rested on his shoulder, you know, uh, talking and drawing at the same time. So,
or looking at a Shiro Masamuni trade <laughs> that I left in his office. We loved our Shiro. Yeah, Calvin, I think the last thing he did for Glenn, because I was working for Glenn full time with, under my contract, um, he was doing. Oh, man, he did some Veronica book, some short story stuff. He did the Gay Rouge book. Um, he did it right after issue two of Gay Rouge. That's right, because Glenn ended up tracking down Richard Horry from Extreme, who could also draw similarly to um to calvin uh he had him do issue three so whatever month that was is, is i believe when it occurred uh carbon likes churros Hori? Sai is saying Hori? Uh, Squibs says Gay Rouge. Yes, Gay Rouge. I don't even know if I can show those books on a stream, man. Like the covers? His, his Veronica cover, as awesome as it is, the one cover, I think it was for issue 10, 9 or 10. I can't show it. He's got It's got a full VJ on it. You know what I'm saying? Sai, I'm supposed to already be on it. I already, I told, I told Shay months ago just to put me on it. Fine. I'm going to, I'm going to go over and I will sign up. Am I not in the group? Sorry. Oh my god. I can't follow this shit. I'm having a I'm having problems on Twix right now. I can't navigate it. Um Sorry, I'm in a group from 2020. I don't see another one. Did the other one get deleted? Here, I'm gonna... That's fine. I messaged, I messaged Shay, sorry. There you go. So I'll be on the auction for that. Stippling Vaughn is gonna DM Sai. Um, let me see, here, I'm gonna try to find something, all right? Uh, 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 let's see here. I can't show the, I know that I can't show the interiors because there's like, there's titties everywhere. Oh, I can't even show that one. Yeah, I can't show this at all. But anyways, um, yeah, Gay Rouge 1 and 2 is 100%, 100%, um, Calvin and, uh, oh, that's weird. Here, this guy has a, this dude has, that's funny. I'll show these. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about right here. Um, I mean, God, I can't see this at all. Check this out. So this is Gay Rouge number one on the left side here. Uh, so that's Calvin Irving's cover, and obviously it's covered because she's she's completely nude, and on his issue two cover as well. Um. 
And then on the right side there, that's a gay root. So oh man, I don't even know. Why did he make that a comic? That's a cash grab. Okay, so I did some inks over Bisley at Verotic. I, I inked a book called Dalkiel. It's a one shot. It's got like a hella evil cover. It's got like a pentagram and a painted face of Dalkiel on it by Biz. And uh, anyways, that's the only time I ever worked over Bisley, like at all. Uh, and then I also got a pinup in it, um, which is colored by, I think Matt Yaki colored it. But anyways, um, Glenn wanted to send me these pages that were drawn in a sepia tone. And he was like, I'm thinking of just having you ink this and getting rid of the tones so we could have those sweet computer colors. And I was like, dude, it looks good like it is. Leave it alone. And I think it was a, like an eight page story. And I'm pretty sure it's that Gay Rouge book there because he it looks like Bisley has the full art credit next to Glenn as an author on the left. So um, whatever auction I pulled this from, yeah, you get a number one Calvin Irving uh illustrated gay rouge one and then a one shot uh bisley gay rouge yeah because i was looking i was like is that a variant no that's how that's got to be those pages that's the only thing i can think um but those pages were supposed to be split into two issues of verotica so maybe he maybe he canceled verotica at the time i'm not really sure it's really weird Uh, Squibs likes uh, Danzig's Death Dealer. Yeah, yeah, I really, I really, well, I especially liked the, the, the Bisley one was awesome. Um, Liam Sharps was okay. Um, I'm not, I'm going to be completely honest, I am not a fan of uh, Arthur Soydum's one. And I like, I like Arthur as a person. I just, he kind of missed the mark on his, it, it looked like he was trying to, um, it looks like he was trying to emulate. I don't even know. It was like Frazetta, but it was like it was just too wispy. Uh, was Glenn as cool as he looks? Uh, I had a good run with him. He was okay until the end. Uh, he started having issues and couldn't pay some of us, and so I quit. A lot of other people quit. So. Uh, I mean, is it, is it his fault that his book sells tanked? I don't think so, but I think it's also important to let your talent know if you don't have, I mean, we're all artists, you know, like I, I feel like you should let your talent know that you're not able to pay them uh, instead of letting them work for you for an additional six months without telling them anything. And then we're all sitting holding our dicks, you know what I mean? kind of what happened so I don't like going out like that because I used to actually be a fan like I actually really loved the original the original misfits and all that so I was super excited when he hired me um I still remember getting a phone call from him I I was I was deathly sick with the flu I was laying on the couch and the phone rang and I crawled out I crawled off the couch and over to the phone and mustered up mustered up enough energy to stand to my feet and uh answer the phone and it was him and i thought it was someone i thought it was my buddy tom who you guys see him in chat tom roan you see him i thought it was tom pranking me i think is what it was something like that where i was like whatever tom what the fuck you want and it was actually glenn because they kind of have a similar voice weirdly enough um but no it was glenn and he hired me he's like hey man i saw your work uh, Calvin, it was Calvin Irving. He's like, yeah, Calvin was showing me some of your stuff, man. Like, uh, and then I think the first thing I did for him was he gave me a script for a three issue Satanica series. I'm not entirely sure if it ever came out, but I got paid for it. So. That was cool. Getting paid, getting paid for your work is always the best.
All right, now we can do this bear suit. Oh my god, I have to take a wicked piss. Here, I'll be right back. I got to you real quick. Do you guys need a? You guys need a video, or you just want to stare at some earth? No, I'll put something else down here. You guys don't. It's too early for Denny's. It's too early. All right, here I'll put these down. You can look at this for a second. This from the other night on a, a Jeremy stream. I was fin finishing this. And then uh, this other one was, uh, I think I did, no, 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 Jeremy stream, uh, Philip Andrew, the Diaz brothers stream, I was out. You guys stare at that for a minute, we'll be right back. Be like, one minute. Took my shoes off, so you know it's serious. You know it's serious. Uh, you know I might actually finish part of the other page too. What's up, Angie? AKA Todd. find something here. Sorry, I got a message somewhere real quick. One second, guys. One second. Uh, fine. Fine, fine, fine. What the hell is this? Okay, so that one's done. 
this one's done. Is that finished? Man, no, should I? Should I? Yes, I'll do it. Shit. Doki. All right. Sorry, I had to respond. Okay. Back to this. Do the squared animal space. What's up, Noah? What is it? Tuxedo cat writing it. <laughs> Do they have it in black? Probably. It's keeping Wait, looking. I don't know. It's it a black cat, so they might not have it in black. They have different color. I need a dark color. I'm not buying you a cat. Tuxedo cat writing it. Give me the dark blue. No, not <laughs> That's really funny. Look. Look, would you guys be happy if I had this shirt? Let's see if it'll will it focus. You guys think of that? Just like it, cat. <laughs> Give me that. I really would lose it. Yeah, I need a dark one though, because I'm gonna be like sweaty. <laughs> it's so funny. What about the purple? What about the, what about this blue color? This dark. Yeah, that's cool. That's I mean that's because the cat doesn't. Yeah. You don't want tie dye? No, <laughs> I'll throw that away. Can you shut my door? Thank you. Give me the dark charcoal. I'll wear it. Give me the dark charcoal one. That cat looks almost as dumb as Kit Kat. Alright. Uh, size says, Shelby, pick a time slot. You hold a... I want to go the same time as, uh, like, I don't want to, I don't want it too early. Can do like, like middle, like second, I guess. Like second. Second or third slot. Oh, we just did taxes. We owe a bunch of money. Yes, Kenneth. Uh, might be Rogue Ford SSS. It is a cat riding the chicken. Brad Teller Corn. Oh, no, no. If I say that, I'm not getting that shirt. <laughs> is that for the cat? No, it's for me. Yeah, Squibs. I, so, unfortunately, there there's no... Uh, there's no halo ghost line around the cat, so the cat would just blend in with the shirt. So it's got like, yeah, I own I own two white shirts, one red shirt, uh, one light blue, I think, a couple grays, and then like fifty all black. Like all my shirts are black. It's all I it's all I wear. Also, when you live in the desert, it's kind of no oh, shit. I got I forgot what his face looks like. Um. Yeah, I live in a desert. I, I just don't want light shirts. It's just I just sweat nonstop. It's I just can't not sweat living out here. It's kind of gross, actually. All right, I'm gonna go through all these. 
all these pages. It's not that. It's not that. Here it is. That's the face I was looking for. Look at that stack. I think I'm going to sell all these pages as like a lot. Like, um, like a complete book. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to sell them all as like just one, like just one giant lot. Why not? Alright, so I got a two over here. I'll try to finagle that a little bit. Um, I also have to animate this thing, so... I'm thinking the head, I'll probably have it kind of doing like a, like a heavy breathing sort of motion behind him. But maybe um, uh, in After Effects, you can do a thing where it's kind of masked out and it's, it's exposed. So maybe just do like a heavy snowfall caddy corner like that. And then maybe have him kind of trail up from behind and out of the blackness. And then he's just breathing behind him. And then he's got his own little like shit sort of blurb. Something like that. Sweaty Robertson, yes. Uh, Bemis don't want to blow smoke up my crack. Those are pages are killer. Well, thanks, man. I mean, it's, um, it's experimental. I don't know that I'll ever do anything like this again, to be honest. It's... Um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of of the deets. You know, I like my my heavy details. So I don't know. It's it's a nice excursion, and there's a purpose for it. It's not just a thing for no reason. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It's I've always kind of came back to it, like with sketches and stuff for fun. But it's not. Um, I don't know. It's nothing I would ever like. I would never like marry the style and just completely flip to it, you know? It's a nice little vacation for a hot minute. But uh, yeah, and then uh, what happens is I start thinking crazy. I'm like, oh, I should do this more often. And then I do a regular sketch and I'm like, oh, no, I shouldn't do that more often. This is actually really nice. I, I, I really like heavy rendered artwork. That pen is also dead. So think I try to give him kind of like almost like a skull looking thing going on with his face. Okay. Uh, this kind of comes up here. And I'm just sort of indicating the shadow because it's I have to break it up with white. It's all completely negative space with all this, so. Um, kind of work this a little bit. Let me give some prominent ears though. I didn't do this on the other ones, but I'm gonna do it this time. But yeah, it's good to it's good to kind of play around, you know, with styles. Like, I'll eventually have a painted book too, um, at some point. I have a plan for it. It's it's uh, it's gonna be different. I don't talk about it because I don't want someone stealing my idea. Because it's I think it's pretty rad, and I just I would hate to put it out in the universe and see someone else tackle it first, who's got more free time than I do. So. Um, yeah, but I'll have a painted book. Uh, when I say painted, I'm talking like watercolor acrylic copics or oh hoo hoos or whatever it is whatever it may be you know like uh mixed media not full not full uh painted i would never i would never go like full acrylic or something like that i'm just not as much painting as i background as i have um because i was i was actually um, when I was taking all my college courses during high school, I was taking a lot of painting courses, uh, oil, acrylic, and uh, gouache. I've never applied any of that to comic work, ever. Because um, I was doing a bunch of uh, landscapes, still, uh, portraiture, stuff like that. Alder, what's up, man? Does your woman want <laughs> what? What? 
I need to get those Ohuhus. I need to sell. I need to sell all these originals so I can buy some Ohuhus and be cool like Jay Ryan. <clears throat> oh, Jay wants to do the voices. <laughs> <laughs> uh squibs loves a frank miller jim lee yeah same here man same here um if you guys ever get a chance to i don't know did i do a video on this um uh andy perez actually hates this book but i i i love it it's got it's got the the cool it's got the tim sell stuff which i don't care for but um it's got the trevor scott stuff in it too which is closer to like the gym style but um yeah, this Jim Lee hardcover. Um, so there's the regular cover. I'll take the dust jacket off. I think he's got a different cover underneath. Was it? Yeah, so he's got this watercolor painting thing underneath. Just pretty, pretty dope. Uh, and then this was the line art to that wizard cover. What was it? Wizard number 35? I might be off with that, but some wizard magazine. Uh, that was the cover to it, the Death Blow by Jim Lee. And then, um, so you got all the covers in here. It's chronologically correct. So you get the Death Blow Zero stuff, which is basically darker image, right? So you get those by Jim. And then it goes, it jumps to some Trevor Scott stuff, I think. And then it goes back to Jim. Even though this looks like Jim, this isn't Jim's work. This is Trevor Scott. And then it goes back to Jim for issue one, which is this book here yeah uh, but this is a pretty it's a pretty sick cover uh collection um oh for anyone that doesn't know this the the uh the not the direct market what's the one with the one with the upc um the retail we want the upc this was the cover so you can find these on ebay for like five bucks they're pretty cheap but um the one with the cheaper paper that went to uh, spinner racks, this was the cover. It was the red, just a, a paint bucket red of that popular cover, which was the, the embossed red, bloody red one with the black background with the black embossed uh, art. Yeah, so it's kind of cool to see that in, in its lines, um, even though I already have it in the ash can. And then issue two was Jim Lee. This is Jim here. Still, still sticking to his guns with the Frank Miller style. And then issue three, I think this is the best illustration Jim Lee's ever done in this style. Um, I got this signed by Jim and, no, 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 Tim Sell. Tim Sell signed this for me. I went to dinner with him in Oakland for a, back when WonderCon was in Oakland. I think this was 93, I think. Um, and then Tim Sell interior. That was Tim Sell's first book, Interiors, which I, and I told him, I was like, I think you need to lean more towards Jim's style because this stuff here just looks, I didn't like it. I mean, as a kid, I, and I, I was also, I didn't really give a shit. I still don't. I would tell artists what I think. I'm like, hey, this stuff was better when you did this. Or what, like, why did you abandon it? Or I get very judgy when I talk to artists about their stuff, especially if I like, if I adore their work, it makes me angry. I'm like, why did you change? This stuff was better. It's kind of a cool cover. I think this is repurposed though. I think this was his original um, layout for Darker Image 2, which never came out. Which uh, he also drew, what was it? The Max and Blood Wolf was also on the cover. So yeah, then you got this stuff with Trevor Scott, you, but you still get the Jim Lee covers. So that's kind of cool. And this also comes in a soft a soft back. This is an awesome cover here, him with the, uh, what do you call it, the chalice? I don't know, I don't, I don't remember the story in this. Um, but yeah, you know, it's him. He's got terminal cancer. And, basically just doing a bunch of uh, Punisher type shit. Uh, then you get some of this in the back. I don't remember who else is in here. But you can get the soft cover to this, like fairly cheap if you can't find the hard cover. Uh, these were, these might be hard to find because they did clearance them out at like 15 a pop on, on Amazon way back. Um, just to get rid of, rid of them out of the warehouse. This was a trading card. I remember when that came out. Uh, this was the advertisement for Darker Image. That piece right there was. That's a. This is a Tim Sell piece. This is this is a little too close to Jim Lee's issue two, page one, I think. Yeah. 
it's weird. Okay, so like, it's like Jim here, Jim Lee's issue two, page one, and then you get Tim Sell's pinup. I'm like, why does this feel like Tim just borrowed Jim Lee's homework? Look at this, Jim Lee, and then two years later you got Tim trying to like, see that? See what I'm talking about? It's like a mirror. Weird. All right, anyways, um, more Tim Cell. Nah, it's Tim Cell did really good on his Hulk book he did with Loeb. I liked that, and then I also liked um, his Spider Man. It was kind of cool, just because it was different. And then Jim Lee here doing more, that's more of a Mignola thing right here. It's literally uh, this feels like it's straight out of like Mignola's uh, Alien one shot. Yeah. Jim, Jim, uh, doing more experimentation with that blow, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, if you can find this, this, uh, the soft cover, I think, has that watercolor painting on it. So, uh, it's a pretty cool collection. I mean, if you're into the style, I'd recommend it. There's not a whole lot other, I mean, other than that, just buy the shit out of Sin City, man. Uh, especially like, uh, the Big Fat Kill, The Big Fat Kill and Family, not Family Values, The Big Fat Kill and The Dame War Red, those two in specific, Frank really leaned into the style. After that, I feel like he kind of started doing more linear work, uh, where he started incorporating like old school Marvel stuff, and, and I, I kind of dropped off. I was like, eh, it's not... Uh, Angie, that was a Deathblow collected edition, a hardcover. Yeah. Uh, and it's old. It's not new. It, it's been out. It's been out for years. Uh, since maybe I remember seeing it at a Barnes and Noble up at my old apartment up in Mesa years ago. So yeah, it's nothing new. Uh, let's see here. blood nonsense coming off of him so i kind of have it come kind of coming out to here i really should just use a brush for that yeah i'll just use a brush got my trusty pencil pouch i've had this thing since like 1989, I think. This thing is old as shit. I'm surprised the zipper still works. Uh, soft chisel. It's not what I need, but I will use it for this. These were a fun pen too. Jay, if you have any of these, uh, the Faber Castle, the chisel tips, they always have a C on it. I think they have a HC, which is a hard chisel, and SC. Uh, the tip is sort of like calligraphy style. But you can get some pretty cool thick to thins. Um, the ink's different in it though, so just a warning: if you if you do bring a marker over it, it will pull a little bit of the black ink, which sucks. So I only use it if it's like a final pass, like this, like it's there's nothing else going over top of this, you know. So yeah, I would never use this for something that I'm gonna bring colors to after the fact, because I already know what the result's gonna be. I've done it before. That's how I know. I'm like, man, that's really weird because all the other favor castles are 100% like safe, like super safe. I don't know why this particular pen, because uh, even the brush pins are safe. This one, for whatever reason, whatever ink's in it, unsafe. It's weird, man. Don't get it. Um, but yeah, so I was going to try to finish this last night and I just, 
And I was just wrecked. I was like, I gotta go to bed. I can't stay up. Just completely wrecked. Had a long day at the college. Uh, still doing a bunch of Unity stuff over there, so um, that was stressing me the hell out. We're doing some stuff now where it's sort of like on the fly, like do it on your own, and I'm like, I don't really understand this. I'm referencing some of the older uh, things that we've done with some of the builds, um, but it's not exactly the same, so I'm getting a little confused with that. It's one thing I hate. I hate filling out on my own. It's the worst. Nothing worse than not feeling comfortable with what you're working on. What's up, Maycock? SSS got a trapper keeper from 89. I think. Let's see if I still got it here. I had a. Uh, maybe I don't. I guess I don't. I got an image watch. I was gifted this in 1994. I was gifted this when I started working there. It's old as hell, man. This was one of the old, uh, when you got hired in, they used to give you these it's scratched all to hell on the back. I could probably get it polished out. It's stainless, uh, stainless steel, I think. Let's see here. Um, my wife told me to sell it. She's like, you never wear it, just sell it. She found one that sold. The problem is I threw the box away. Uh, they used to come like this and it had a pillow and it came in a wooden box, like a little casket looking thing. And it would slide open with the image, like a wood graved image eye on it. And um, I mean, mine's wrecked. She said she saw one that was like heavily worn, but it had the box. And I guess it, she said it went for like 875. It auctioned for like 875. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'd probably pull 300 out of it if I, if I really want to try to sell it, I guess. I don't know. Um, where the fuck is that actually? No, I'm concerned. See, got all my rulers. Oh, here it is. I found it. I guess this isn't that old. Uh, well, this is 84. Yeah, it's got my old GoBots ruler right there. I got this from a book fair. Um, I think I was in first grade. I think I was in first grade. Yeah, I tried draw. I tried drawing stuff. I don't know what the hell I was doing there. It's like pencil. I don't understand it. Um, yeah, I think I was in first grade when I got this. It was 84. So my sister would have been four. That would have made me seven, I guess, right? Yeah. Anyways, I think it's the oldest like thing that I got art supply-wise. Yeah, Jay, I love that. I love that ruler. Oh, oh, uh, KSSS Shelby scooter from GoBots or T-Bob for mask. I'm not even going to hesitate, bro. T-Bob all the way. T-Bob, he had more articulation. Uh, his face didn't look stupid. Scooter's face looked dumb. Um, yeah, T-Bob, and then, and then T-Bob was more, like, human-friendly, too, right? Like, he would let, like, people just write him all day. I used to have that, um, 
I used to have that mask figure way back in the day. Um, yeah, I had I had a bunch. I was really really into mask uh, when they first started coming out, and fortunately, I was old enough to voice my opinion. And a lot of their releases coincided with holidays like Christmas and stuff, so I was able to like acquire quite a bit of it um, when I was when I was young. Um, obviously I don't have them now. Uh, it's not from outgrowing them or nothing. Um, when my parents divorced, a lot of my stuff ended up at my mom's place and my sister and I were actually raised by our dad. And so a lot of it just kind of disappeared into the ether with my mom. So, uh, yeah, that's where all that went. But yeah, I had a lot, I had a lot of transformer generation one stuff. I had a lot of that and pretty much all of that, including my Joes. Um, I was kind of a completist back then the same way that i am with the uh master of the universe stuff that's how i was about mask sectars and transformers um and joe's the gi joe stuff um i was really really into the dreadnoughts like i had all of them like everything all of them and all their vehicles and all the variants and all the tiger force like everything like even after the fact like yeah but yeah and my parents divorced it all ended up my mom's and we just kind of you know fell off i didn't see my mom again until so like i think it was uh oh geez i was like 22 so like i didn't see her from the time i was uh oh god nine yeah i think it was like nine and then 22 the next time i saw her yeah so but yeah all that stuff did all that stuff disappeared i mean it's she ain't keeping she's not holding on to none of that shit so that's why i dive into all this this uh you know this relaunch stuff there's i think that mask is getting that's something you guys will see me going heavy on too if they do um i think mask is getting like an official uh like the retro style relaunch of all the, the early stuff which would be so awesome if it did man i would be 100 100 percent in on that yeah i'd be all in So not this page, but I have another page that uh, I think I'm going to go real heavy on some uh, black splatter. I, I got an area on it where not I was thinking of maybe doing it on the face and then bringing some white in, but I I feel like that's just too much work for this thing. This thing I just need to get this done. Oh shit! J Ryan's almost got a full set of Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Uh, Bemis's dad put all of his box Jeju vehicles out by the trash to make space. Half that shit's probably went up on eBay, man. Hate to say it. Um. I found out I have, I got an aunt who, uh, she had a garage sale without telling my cousin about it. Uh, she sold all. He had a completely. He had a complete set of the Shogun Warriors, the giant vinyls. He had a complete set, like of the original, the OG '70s, including the Godzilla with the shooting fist. He was a weirdo. He never played with his toys. They went to a shelf. They were just aesthetic for his room. And he also had. Uh, he had a Dan Guard with box. Uh, the seven inch deluxe one. Um, and uh, he had a few other ones too that he actually opened up. But anyways, they were all minty fresh. And uh, she sold she sold those for five a piece at a garage sale. Like this is kind of recent. And then she also sold um, the reason he found out is because I, I had told him what they're going for. And I had asked him if he wants to part with his Dan because Dan guards my boy. 
and I was like, hey, if if you want to sell me that Dangard dude, I'm, I'm down. So he inquired and found out that oh, mom sold all my shit at some garage sale and didn't tell me because she figured he left it there, so he must not want it. But yeah, some dude out there got a steal of a lifetime, man. Bought all that stuff, gave her like he gave him a discount. He gave her like 200 bucks for like two boxes of just mint condition Japanese toys and that dude's got stories I'm sure now you know he's like you won't believe how I got this stuff I told I'm like I'm surprised you're even talking to her man I would like that right there that's when you like disown family it's ground over some toys oh yes 10 days a week 15 ways till Sunday Sorry, mom. We're never talking again. <laughs> Just like Shelby's mom. Uh, some of y'all's parents on drugs, says Gordon. <laughs> uh, question slash problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Rick. Oh, Rick, I need to send your... I'll, Rick, I'm gonna send you your. I'll send you your medals today. Okay. I I got some. I got your stuff. It, I just need to put it. In a, I need to put it in a box, dude. Um. Yeah. So. I'll get that out, dude. Um. Yeah. I had to. I had to mail a cover off. And I had to mail off a, a CGC package today too, which they all went out this morning. I still want them sitting, man got too much stuff going on during the weekend and the post office um kind of a pain we got one that's kind of close but they're super busy because there's only one open on a saturday and during the weekdays uh the other ones are super busy so i'm like well if i make it early enough in the morning i can actually get stuff out just get so hot in here yeah so Um, ba, 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 ba. Right, it's close enough. All right. Yeah. As long as it's close, right? It's a comic. You guys aren't. You guys aren't uh, keeping score. All right. Oh, and then and then I also found <laughs> I also found out uh, she also sold my cousins because this is something I didn't even know he had. So apparently, later on, he ended up he ended up grabbing a bunch of stuff from this place called uh, Young's Young's Toys. He said he had boxed mint con like unopened boxed. Uh, he had the uh, Zartan with the skiff, and then he also had a Serpentor with his skiff boxed and she sold those two for like three bucks and he he that's the one that actually pissed him off the most because like he knew what he was getting when he got those clearance toys when the, when young's went out of business or whatever it was so that's the one that he was actually more he was more mad about that than the um the uh those 20 inch vinyl or whatever they are you know those vinyl figures um oh shit can't believe I did that. Covered up his tooth. Here, so I'm gonna do this, and then I'll shave it down. Pig uh, Posca is basically like acrylic, so you can make a large area and then just kind of shave it back, let it dry, and then you just shave shave into it. I'm just here to piss you guys off today. Tell you about parents making dumb choices. Uh. Carbon says, uh, mom's going to purgatory for two, 2,000 years. Yep. Uh, yeah, 9-6 straight to the garbage. Um, and also, I saw you earlier, Rex. Sorry. Did I say hi to Rex? I feel like I said hi to Rex. I forget. Over well, here we talking about toys. Frank Miller.
think I'm just going to go like, I'm just going to do kind of a loosey goosey outline. This guy's going to be huge. And then I'll, uh, I'll come in with some white out and, and do a little bit of this and that. I got some. Uh, I got to come in. I got to come in on this too and do all the uh, snow effects as well, which basically is just dots, dude. Let's be real. Snow is just dots. <laughs> dots. I just reminded myself of something rather silly. I can't say it online. He's a hairy one. That's still a little wet, I think. I'm not, not going to hit it just yet. And the nice thing about this stuff too is uh, you can shave these back too. Like if you feel like your lines are like too chunky or your feathering is kind of whack, you can always shave away at it. Like you can kind of fake it, you know, like so it looks like you kind of knew what you were doing. Uh, I do that a lot. You guys don't notice it unless you got the original. You're not really going to see it. But it's part of comics. I mean, we all... You know, there is a permanence to the ink, and sometimes you have to do certain things certain ways to get a certain effect, and it's not always a traditional method. So, it is what it is. But as long as the end result, as long as it looks, you know, aesthetically pleasing, for the most part, then she all right. to drink my coffee dude i'm not even really a coffee fan i'm more of a chocolate fanatic i just uh lived here for five years at this point i finally went to that that black rock and they opened up prior to covid and um just went one day i was like you know what i'm gonna go over to this joint see what's going on in there and uh they made me drink and i was like this is literally the best mocha that i've had in probably ever so they've been seeing me in there a bit lately. And I'm not entirely sure whether or not it's actually part of global black rock, which is actually a terrible corporation. They own like 90% of the world. Might be exaggerating that percentage, but you get my drift. At Whackass, what's up? Kiss SS, uh, Shelby not counting Zartan or siblings, best dreadnought. Uh, what, Buzzer? Is, is Buzzer, I, I might have the name wrong. Is it Buzzer? They're all very unique, man. They're, they're all very unique. So. Is it, bu is it Buzzer? Which is the one with the, the chainsaw? Yeah, otherwise, I, um, you guys are going to hate me. I would have said uh, Zorana or Zartana, whatever her name was. Like, I kind of checked out. As soon as, dude, as soon as those figures were gone, I kind of had to, like, mentally check out. Because it's like, otherwise I'll obsess over it. Like, loss, you know? I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to write them off.
buzzer yes yes yeah buzz i would say buzzer honestly for personally it's i just think they had kind of the one of the cooler designs as far as like the three you know the three dudes um yeah um yeah i'd say buzzer I kind of liked his attitude in the cartoon too. I, I just they felt very swamp outlands punk rock. <laughs> they had kind of that that punk rock aesthetic. If it was like cool to be punk in the swamp, I liked it. It was cool. They were like uh, they would have totally got down with uh, the misfits from Jim and the Holograms. You know what I'm saying? Like they would have they would have got down impregnate a couple of them for sure they should have did a spin-off they should have did one where like tomax and zamont like fund like they fund both bands and then just like rip them both off of all the royalties because they're they're badass like that. The whole time they get uh, Rio, you know they they imprison they imprison Rio in like a uh, some sort of a cage that you know he gets shocked if you touch the edges you know like that's i can see that i can see that being an actual cartoon in the 80s you know what do you say jay <laughs> pizzazz is blood's too rich for like a wood trash <laughs> wink and blink and nod what yeah buzzer torch and ripper yeah yeah. Torch was kind of kind of felt like a, a throw like a throwaway. I don't know. They all have it, you know. Just like the uh even with the Transformers franchise, you got like throwaway characters, you know. Like I always felt like um and there's some that are underutilized, like with the Autobot. I always felt like uh, Will Jack was always underutilized, like as far as like the coolness factor. Like he looks cool. He's got that kind of. He's got kind of almost like a sound wave vibe to him, you know. Like he looks cool, but they never really. They wanted you to like the characters that were like the Boy Scouts, and it's like I don't like those ones, man. Like Iron High, it's like eh, eh, I could do I. Give me someone else. They're like, Cliff Jumper's great. You should like him. I'm like, no, I'm good. Wanna be bumblebee ass. Three inch figure. Get out of here with that. Alright, I gotta leave this spot open because I signed it. I'll I'll blacken that out in Photoshop. That'll be blacked out in Adobe. All right, so I got that piece done. What time is it? We're at noon. I got some time. Oh, Zanzibar? Zandabar? Is it? I thought it was Zanzibar. Am I wrong or am I right? Stippling Mon says, whatever happened to the Dreadnought Pirate Zan Zandibar? I thought there was a, I thought the D was a Z. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. Like I said, I, I don't know. Yeah, see, Kenneth? Yeah, Walt the Misfits and Dreadnought's cartoon now. Yeah, they're doing some they're doing some goofy shit with their um those G.I. Joe classifieds. Um goofy being the figures are cool. Um I got a buddy who is very much into collecting them. He's like a completist and he, according to him, he's having hell of a time because of the uh they have like limited release events. And I guess he missed out on a pretty big one, which was like, uh, I think it was some Tiger Force character, and it came with a camouflage version of like the ferret. Was it ferret? I think it was, was it Wrecker? I forget. Anyways, he said he missed out, and he's kind of bummed because it's like, 
that was now it's a big money it's basically a big money purchase now and it, and it wasn't supposed to be it was supposed to be just like a a one and done you know the true og fans will be able to grab it and it just it sold out like bots were buying them left and right apparently um i've had to deal with a little bit of that too with the uh the he-man releases the origins line especially but i think mattel kind of caught on to that a little bit because they're their exclusives have have been lasting more than just a day which usually it's like one day and they're all sold out so all right now i'm adding my snow and then this page is done i almost forgot to do the snow and it's super random no rhyme or reason to it i try to keep the direction of it kind of going the same way uh other than that though really is no rhyme or reason. I'm not going to use this pin for this. I'm going to use one of these cheap ones. Here's this. Here's this. Yeah, we'll use this guy. Thick and crusty. Just like you like it, Jay. Still gotta fix that tooth. I'm gonna do that while I just reminded myself, or I will forget. All right, so this is what I'm talking about shaving it back. See that? Literally just shaved it back. Boom, now you got a sharp edge for the tooth. Uh, Oh, I'm going to highlight this one right here. Let's leave this up for a second. That's interesting. I was really enjoying the day. I was like, nothing weird is going to happen today. A normal day, normal fun day on YouTube. All right, I think that's good enough. I don't want to overdo it. All right, I'm gonna hit this guy down here just a little bit. Uh, Monkey Wrench, Thrasher, Zanzibar, and Road Pig. Yes. Yes. Love them all. Um, I have all the first appearance comics. That's like the one thing I, I was able to actually, you know, because by the time I was like, oh, I'm basically never going to see my uh, figures again. Uh, I started getting into the books because I was like, well, I can get these. These are still accessible to me. I started getting first appearances. Like I'm a weirdo, man. I got I got first appearance too of like the Transformer stuff too. I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, which basically, you know, 50 of them have a first appearance in that Transformer miniseries number one with the Sinkevich cover. I mean, really, that's the book to have. It's got first appearance of everything. And then with Star Wars, though, if you have the original 70s Star Wars Marvel books, um, issue number two is the one to have because that one has like, it's like like 80 first appearances uh and one of them is a first and last appearance of uh greedo greedo's greedo's uh my character i'm all about greedo i got a pretty big greedo toy collection so that's the only book i care about but yeah It has a ton. And it's funny, if you look at the CGC census for that book, for Star Wars number two, 
Um, it actually has listed first appearance of Death Star, first appearance of Millennium Falcon. I'm like, why are vehicles being listed in this stupid thing? Like, that's so weird to me. Anything to call out a key, right? Someone out there insisted. He's like... I have all 93 versions of the Millennium Falcon. Can you guys please acknowledge the Millennium Falcon? All right, this is going away. Love Greedo, Jay. Greedo, Greedo is the shiznit. Yeah, I got, I mean, I don't have a whole lot. I got, uh, I got the 18. I don't have the Sideshow one, but I got an 18 plastic Greedo. And then I got the, uh, let's see, I got the... Two different versions of the black series and then i also have his uh he they had a retro style uh cloth doll version of him that came out uh i think when they were doing the um the special editions if you remember those um yeah i got one of those and the sculpt on the head is kind of whack, but I, I got it literally just because it's a it's a burrito. I was like, uh, I kind of need it. It looks stupid, but they give they give they barely ever touch burrito with like new new product. So kind of unimportant, I guess. All right, so there's that. I feel like these spots are very, very wet. That's right, Rick. Shoot first, next questions later. Um, yeah, so I'm not streaming tonight with um, with Pete Smetty, that's going to be on the 26th, I think. Yeah. But I'll, I'll post about it when I do. I'll let you guys know before I do. Um, and I think that's just a hangout. He just, I, I think he just needed some, um, just some guests, you know. I know he had Noah on kind of recently. And uh, uh, if you guys got to see Noah, Noah definitely lied to Pete. He told him he's going to be done with that double pager. He's still working on it, uh, to my knowledge. So that never got done. Um, good but i don't like that so i'm gonna clean that one out i don't like that at all that and i'm gonna shave that one back i do a lot of that i'll hit something with some white detail and then i gotta shave it shave it down usually do not do this oh by the way this is the final page of this little project book it's the final page in print i should say not the final page i'm working on i still got two to go on it yes it's the final page i'm uh just wanted to knock it out first to make sure it was kind of quality and it is it's it is kind of quality so i'm okay with it um, I really hope that's dry. It was dry. Okay. Shave back the chin a little bit. Those dots are weird. Probably going to cast a weird shadow in the Adobe. No, I was working on that double pager yesterday. Uh, Venus is looking forward to some cockfight. Alright, let's this other page. Oh, shit. 
my Frank. I got a few homages in here. Look, look. So I got Frank Wolvie cover. I also got an homage to uh, Dark Knight Returns number one cover right here, the same pose, right? My favorite panel in this whole freaking thing is this one right here. That's my favorite panel that I've done for this project. It's the best best one all right so you got these two to go I still gotta scan that okay so you got, got one I gotta scan I have to separate these since I have to scan them there's one uh, these are gonna get drawn right now this is already scanned that's already scanned that's already scanned that's really good to go. This guy's good to go. I gotta scan this. And then these two, and I'm done. That's it, man. Those two pages. Uh, and what time is it? 12. I'm gonna stream for another hour, guys. So you can take off if you want. Come back. Okay, back. Okay. She probably got hot on it. Yeah. Uh, cat's outside basking in the sun. All right. Um, okay, so I think I'll attack a couple panels here first. And then I'm going to knock out some of the other page. We will do that. <clears throat> What's even going on over here? <laughs> uh, KSS says, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Howard Chaykin draw the original movie adaptation of the first Star Wars movie? Williamson came later. Um... Hmm. He did some of it. So it was okay, it was inked by Rick Hoberg. But according to Hoberg, who I do speak to, um a lot of pages was just Rick Hoberg. And even though he was inking Howard as well, like it was just him, like literally start to finish him because of deadlines. And he was saying like back in the day, Marvel was really not thorough. Like he was saying there's several books he's worked on where they credited the wrong inker or they credited, they miscredited or they wouldn't credit the cover artist. Like, um, oh, here's one. Star Wars, I was speaking of the devil. Star Wars number two, the cover pencils and inks is 100% Rick Hoberg. He still has the original. He's, he's got it framed at the entry, the doorway of his, of his home. Um, Everyone assumes that it is Shaken. It is not Shaken. And Shaken will even tell you it's not him. It's it's not his work. It's Rick. Uh, 
I think it had too many characters. It had some weird reason why you did it too. Uh, the one with the uh, Obi Wan, you know, and the, there's like the big bar fight or whatever's going on. But yeah, that's a hundred percent Hoberg, man. Like, uh, yeah. So it's it's really weird. You would have to ask them specifically what they did. Um, and I feel like they're both pretty honest about it, you know. From what I gather, they're pretty honest. They're they're not gonna like. One of them's not at the same show. They're not gonna be credit hogging nothing, you know. Um, yeah, Sibylmon says, Howard did the bulk of the work, Hoberg and Lieber did most of the finishes. Yeah, and I wouldn't even say finishes, per se, just because of the... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I wasn't there. But finishes kind of imply that they left a lot to be done as a penciler, and I know that wasn't the case on everything, but it yes, it absolutely did occur. Like it did happen a lot, but not as much as what not as much as what I think fandom thinks. I, I think it was sort of a mixture. Um, but it's more about the deadlines. You know stuff that was um, running late, so they would they're like, Well, we have an inker who actually is a penciler, so let's let him kind of handle give them give them really tight layouts and then he can just handle it uh straight up with the nib because we had to get these books out you know um yeah i don't know i would never i would never deal with a licensed property to be honest personally it's it's too much of a hassle i don't i don't really see the win in it as far as the publishing side is concerned uh, get some name brand recognition for your company, but it's like nobody cares about that. All they see is the brand. They just see that, oh, it's a Star Wars product. Like, no one gives a shit that Marvel's name is on those books now. No one cares. DC could start publishing Star Wars, and people would literally just look at it and say, oh, it's a Star Wars comic. They wouldn't say, oh, wow, we need to be emotionally and financially invested in DC now because they're doing Star Wars books. No, that's not at all accurate. That's. So I never, I, I've never understood IDW with their business model because I don't think um, that movie stuff was all losses from what I heard. Like the, uh, there was a hot minute where they were doing a bunch of movie licenses, Underworld stuff. None of those, none of those books made money. And they're like, oh, we're doing it for like, <clears throat> basically to establish that they're reputable for creating content for brand. And it's like, well, I don't know, man. It feels kind of like a waste. I almost feel like they should have just ran with creator own stuff the way Image did. Kind of shot themselves in the foot with that one. And then they also got to pay royalties for these books that, I don't know, it's just too much of a control thing. You got companies telling them yes and no what they're allowed to do and then you also got the same companies pulling large percentages of the profits as well as getting a uh, licensing fees and everything i'm just like it, it just seems like i don't know with publishing i just don't i don't see the win in that i was never a dark horse fan because they were doing books that weren't owned by them or creator own <laughs> no i wouldn't well look okay so so no, I, I would never, when I say work, I mean, like, I would never run one as a publisher. Like, I have worked on licensed stuff. And it, it was, it was a fucking nightmare. You, you got, you got, you got 10 people putting their opinions on your work who, ha who have zero talent. Like, get the hell out of here with that, right? Uh, I never worked on licensed property, Shelby. You guess he's off the list for artists. Return of Gnome the Nor- No! 257.17. That's a very specific amount for Norm. 
it is a waste it is a waste like i don't know i just feel like if the, like why are they okay why are these companies not investing in their own product if they actually believe in it right like why is hasbro and mattel not making comics why do they not have a comic branch it's you know and i and i would say it's because they're they're not they're not competent enough to do so and i also think that they probably know that it's not going to be a long-term endeavor for their company But I worked on Stargate. I worked on... I did some Star Wars stuff. There's nothing worse than tell, getting told by somebody... Uh, yeah, invoice us. This looks great. And then three days later... Here's ten revisions. When you're already moved on to the next thing. I'm going to tell you as an artist, there's nothing worse than that. And it just makes you really not want to fucking do any more work for these people because lines are crossed nobody nobody communicates shit the it's just and a lot of it is just it's it's dick swinging it's all a contest it's you know you got certain people in the company that just want to make their mark or, or establish that oh well i'm here to do this job of editing so i'm going to make sure that edits are made otherwise I didn't do my job, right? And it's like that doesn't make it no, if it, if it's good to go, you you green light it. You don't have to sit there and make changes to something for the sake of making changes. Like change for the better is good, but you only do that if it's necessary. Is it necessary? Everything has room for improvement, but we're not making perfect books here. You're matter of fact, you're making something that is is uh with toys and stuff you already you already finger cuffed the company because you told them you can't kill no one you can't do this you can't do that you can't make any changes in story so basically they're just they're just creating 30 you know it's it's like creating a a, a 30 minute cartoon to sell you different versions of the same toy right like that's kind of what these companies do like um any sort of approval would be based on a lineup change in figures right like there's no there's no emotional investment by any writer or artist to do good on any of these products because why like um you know that's why dark knight returns is so special is because frank was green lit you got to see Batman kick Superman's ass. You got to see Superman die and be resurrected by, you know, Gaia or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, you got to see this stuff that you didn't get to see before. Um, they trusted him with their characters. And that's the result. You get really cool results. But a lot of these companies are like, no, you can't make any drastic changes to this character. You can't do this. You can't do that. It takes a board meeting to get something approved. It's just, it's, it just, it's a, it's a lot of wasted energy. You're better off just doing your own thing. Just do your own thing. Uh, it should be these companies coming to comic publishers, begging them to make their product for them, not the other way around. That's the way I see it. And if you don't have a toy company coming to you to make their product, then they don't deserve a comic. You know what I'm saying? Like it shouldn't be people like me who are fanboys of a, of a thing going to the company going like can i please publish your thing that you don't care enough about to try to publish yourself deep thoughts with shelves uh sir so curial how are you uh kisses shelby the only one who has final okay on the return of the gnome named as norm is anthony michael hall and he doesn't give a shit. 
<sighs> That's funny. I just watched him last night. I was uh, I finished up uh, 16 Candles <laughs> of all things. I had 16 Candles on last night. I fell asleep on the couch because the stupid cat fell asleep on me. She fell asleep on my chest and then like made me fall asleep. I was like, oh my god. I woke up 5 a.m. I was like, oh, I guess my day started. I got up and did dishes 5 in the morning. And then uh, 6, I started waking the family up, get up for the day. So I should be napping right now. I mean, that's why I'm rambling. I'm actually like just exhausted. Yeah, you know, I was up way too late last night. bag farts. Never again. No more bag farts ever again. You guys gonna trick it out for old man con? I figure I'll do okay. I got a few commissions from it. Um, nothing overwhelming. I told Mike, I'm like, I'm not. He he seems really concerned whether or not I get a bunch, and I'm like, I'm really not worried about it. I I really just am glad that he reached out and uh, he said I've known him for years. I'm just glad he reached out to me to. Go be involved with something he's doing. His little shows, you know. Um, I find them much more enjoyable than actual, like, larger conventions. Um, things set in actual comic shops and stuff, you know. Um, they're just... They're more real. I feel like, uh, as an artist at least, I have a lot more opportunities as well as far as, like, making sales. It feels a little more organic. Um... That's one thing I regret. He, he had opened up a shop a few years ago and uh, tried to guess me to it. And I just didn't, I just didn't, I couldn't make the time for it. I could have made the time. I just, I just didn't, you know, some of you just don't make the time. I was like, yeah, dude, I can't make it. And uh, regret that. Cause that shop, he didn't keep it open very long. Uh, makes it sound like it just was a little overwhelming as far as like just keeping up with it. And then he was also, um, He's also a vendor. He's never stopped being a vendor for conventions. So he does other cons and just, he said it just got too heavy. Business was too heavy with running stuff back home. Plus uh, product inventory, you know, everything. He's got his son helping and stuff, but it just. Started affecting some things. So he kind of got out of it. But he definitely loves comics. So. I'll have to see if he brings any of his. Uh, he's got a brewery. He does he does beers too. So um, if he's got any at this show. I'll have to post up for it. Um, he makes a pretty. Pretty mean Hefeweizer. Uh, if you guys ever see anything. Under. Um, uh, Santan Brewery. That's his company, and he's in he's in most grocery stores, uh, at least in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, usually, uh, most of his stuff I think is marketed as like four packs, but uh, you'll find it in like the freezer section or the the dry shelf section of like a Walmart, Target. They they all have it down here. It's pretty easy to find. 
I didn't know that was him. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, man, it's my brewing company. I was like, I see you in all the stores. I didn't know that was you. He's like, oh, yeah, man, I do a lot of stuff. I was like, all right, cool. He brought me some at a Phoenix Con a few years ago when he first started up. I was like, Mike, pretty damn good, man. Just letting you know. Like, I, I'm I'm a little bit of a stickler with my, my Hefeweizens. I like my true German. I like my, my true German beers or my... Uh, authentic mexican beer i like my modelos you know i'll drink a pacifico once in a while too they gotta be in the right mood get a pacifico or like a corona i tried a corona light made me want to vomit disgusting K-pop wants everyone to know that K-pop is here. What's up, K-pop? Uh, Bemis is going to a small show in Salem Saturday, close to Portland. It's a little trek. Yeah, Bemis, I'm surprised I didn't run into you at some point. Um, I used to do that show in Portland. It's a smaller show. What's it called? Uh, something City Con, I think. I forgot the name of it. It's a smaller, it's a smaller uh, show. But Rose Rose City, is it Rose City? I did that show like five years in a row, man. Um, I did okay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Rose City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did okay. We got we got some family friends that live. Um, they live up there in Washington, right, right, right into Washington. They live right there. So I would usually just stay over their place and drive down to the show. Cause the show's pretty close to their house. You know, it's 20 minutes down the freeway. Nothing too crazy. All right, I'm gonna cheat on these blades. I gotta get these blades in here. Uh, yeah, 2015. I was up. I was up there. For that. Yeah, I was up there. Uh, let me check my Facebook. I, I mean, I posted there for sure. Um, I used to have 10 by 10 booths actually too. Um, posts. Uh, let's see, 2013. Uh, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17. Holy crap, how tiny my baby is. with that uh, let's see yeah that's the older one wow it's old 2014 I'm trying to see which photos I got from there so uh 12 through 17 it looks like 12 through 17. <clears throat> but yeah, I had 10 by 10s, uh, usually corner booths. Damn, it's old school. I'll show you some. I'll show you some pictures. I got. Uh, where are we at? Uh, so let's see. So there's that's my old booth. That was 2013. I don't have photos from all of it. Uh, it's my wife cosplaying as Psylocke. Um, the girl behind me is 
uh, my good friend Mary. She was she used to be a production manager at Top Cow. She was my boss at Image way back. She's like an ex Image. She worked at Image for like 20 years. Um, we still we're still good friends. There's us at the booth. Um, oh, there's me and Everly. Look how little she is, man. She like she's gonna be 10 soon. She was one. Itty bitty. Tiny, tiny child. I miss those days. Now she tells me to like go away. I'm embarrassing. Dad, I can walk by myself. I don't need you. A lot of I don't need you. Stuff like that. Kids have no chill. She tells me I'm embarrassing. I'm like, how am I embarrassing? Like I literally work at your school. Is that embarrassing? It's funny though, if she ever sees me uh, in the hallway, you know, first thing she does is runs up and like gives me attention. It's like, you like it. You like that I'm here. <laughs> Talk to the hand daddy. Exactly. I'm gonna go straight up Frank on this one. I'm gonna try to go as bold as I can on this page. Cause I just really wanna finish it and it's 12.45, 12.47. So let's see what I can do. What that brush pin do. I might end up down at C2. I'll go down to C2E2. Not gonna, not gonna bend there. They've actually denied my. Uh, uh, I did not apply in the last two years, but they denied me like three years in a row, so I gave up on them. I gave up on Reed Pop years ago. It's just. As a company, I just stopped trying. Uh, Andy and I both have the same weird problem. With, like, like he, same thing happened to him. Uh, we were both approved like a few years in a row, and then kind of out of nowhere, both of us started like not getting approved. And then uh, this started up five years ago, something like that. Yeah. Their shows are okay. They're not the best. I mean, the only reason their shows are good is because of the artists that go and decide to go all out with what they bring. But um, the show doesn't have anything to offer except for overpriced food. And, you know, uh, it's not very accommodating. A lot of these big shows are just not actual fun for like creators to do. So I'm okay with not going again. I might, if I do go, it'll be just to kind of see some people and hang out a little bit. That's all up in the air. I don't know. You guys ever see me posting? I will not be announcing it. I'll just end up there. Hmm. You know, Bemis, that goes hand in hand with the Pacific Northwest. I'm going to be quite honest. That's why I have no interest in moving there. I, there was a point where we were looking at Portland. We were looking at um, a few cities in Washington State. And uh, I'm glad we didn't. Yeah, I just... I. Oh man, a lot of a lot of really bad takes in uh, this last couple years. A lot of bad takes for sure. And trying to navigate it, you feel like 
you're just working with crazy people, right? Like you feel like everyone just lost their goddamn mind. It's weird. It's a weird time, man. It just feels like there's a lot of things that should be should be uh not should be legal but a lot of things that should be legally protected or for whatever reason they're just overlooked and it's just it's kind of sad um, got a friend who was released from a police department in cali for that she didn't want to do what they were trying to tell them they had to do and she didn't do it and they released her and then they call her back to get her back she already moved out of state um, i think she's in she's out in uh, idaho now but uh yeah they're like doing callbacks trying to bring back people they laid off who were just going against the fucking man and it's like i i wouldn't i wouldn't go back so i'm like what's to stop them again you know I mean, we all got to work, but shit. I don't know. <clears throat> all the coasters, all the coasts have been... My opinion is all coastal cities have been fucked for a decade. It's not nothing new. It's... I, le I left California because I was sick and tired of being gouged. I mean, there's lots of there's lots of reasons not to be there, and unfortunately, they have the coolest weather. They have the coolest, um, prettiest places to live. Even I mean, it just sucks because it's like shit, man. Like, why can't all that weirdness just take place, uh, you know, somewhere else? It does. I mean, it happens also in Florida, but still, it's like. Florida is a different beast. It's just Florida is just weird. Been to Florida a few times. Every time had a completely weird experience. The same difference uh they got some they got some pretty cool looking beaches uh they do have it's not all bad you know it's just they do have weirdness though you're gonna definitely encounter some undesirable situations there for sure you guys like how i navigate my words here i'm just here for the art man just here for the art It doesn't say Rick Sailor, so I'm not answering it. Um, I've been getting call. <laughs> I've been getting calls from some place, and it's literally um, they'll leave voicemails that are like. Um, it's very obviously like date some sort of data mining service right and um but on the call id someone apparently because i looked it up and i was like man that's weird why does it say that um uh, it listed their name here i'll write it down so you can see um the way it comes up in my phone it's it's written like um i need a piece of paper here This is what it says on my phone of who's trying to call me.
That's what it says their name is. It says trying to get paid on the uh, on the call ID. And I'm like, what the fuck? What is like that's funny? That's hilarious. But um Yeah, and, and so I always let it go to voice and yeah, it's some weird company like trying to like get your social and stuff. And I looked it up online, someone said someone on Google said it was a uh, like a furniture company that's trying to like I don't know and but I think it's just a uh, whatever. I think they change. I think they just literally you're just trying to get people's like credit card info and stuff. Um but yeah, somehow and I put them on a block list so I haven't seen them in a bit, but it's funny, man. When I saw that trying to get paid, I was dying. I was like, "Oh my god, that's hilarious." Who's calling you trying to get paid? <laughs> it's so funny. I knew a I knew a trainer that was spelled almost like that. She had giant fake boobs. Pay up, sucker. This is Jay Ryan. <laughs> Your lawyer gives me that. Angie says, please. Aim. All right, they just need my account information to give me the three mil, to give me three mil, M-I-L. We have three mil in your name, Nigerian Prince. Yes, yes. Straight up. They get mad, I'm like, I don't like money. Money's stupid. Money's dumb. Why are you trying to give me this money? Just get on there and tell me you're already rich. I got a proposal for you, Trina. Yeah, I got to the point where it wasn't even funny anymore. I'd be driving, it's going off, and was just like, "Who is it?" I was like, "Trina." It's like, "Oh, like it's already lost its order." Yeah, I remember when we used to laugh at that. Yeah, it was years ago. Someone else has identified them as old Trina. We're trying to get paid. I don't know how you do how do you do that? How do you identify a number? Because Google even shows it as that. They're like, oh yeah, this number's been identified as spam and this and this. But I'm like, who who's the reporting source? Is it just enough people report it and then it becomes visible or never understood that? One of the customer service lines for PayPal is actually registered as a uh, uh, as a spam service as well, and it's not even a spam service. It's literally for PayPal credit. It's like some phone. It's like some alternate number that they legally own, and I, I think they had to uh, create a new one because of that, because it was like not going through on a lot of people's uh, messages or something like that. I remember reading about that. trying to get laid <laughs> Arush want new digits oh trying a vagina that is a good punk name I'd listen to him 
at least once. to do that part right there. That's why I brought that out. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and oh, if you guys haven't noticed, there is no blades of grass in this. Zero blades of grass. Can you believe it? Can you believe I have zero blades of grass? I would usually just freehand this, but nah. That's my answer, but nah. It's gonna be all black. Black. All right, where is I'm gonna use my chisel tip. What's your guys' opinion of soft chisels? This is a soft chisel tip. Although I can't gauge where the freaking line is laying down on this stupid thing. Sorry, I'm off camera. Can't see. Damn. My eyeballs were starting to cross on that one. I just really don't want to bring white out against the edge of this thing. I'd rather just be nice and finished. And I'm just going to bring some snow against it. That's going to be a, bring a few s snowflakes. A couple snowflakes maybe all the day. Who's this guy? All right. Jet black to the center. <clears throat> Saltines. <laughs> uh, Phil Collins. No, 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 no. Jawbreaker. They have a song called Jet Black on their Dear You album. They were a punk band that at some point became emo because a bunch of bands started copying their style and then created this thing called emo. But in the 80s, there was no emo. There was just punk. So they were just, they were different, but they were not, there was no emo category. But eventually they got labeled as uh, emo, which I disagree with. I don't think they are. I think they're just, they're different and people started just bandwagoning their style because it was just so different. Uh, really like their album. Uh, their Unfun album is really cool. Yeah, they did get a little soft later on, though. They reunited. 
last couple of years. I got some new stuff in the works from what I heard. Which would be kind of cool if it actually comes out. Where the hell is my... Okay, I guess I'm using a 4. Uh, let's do this. Alright, so I'm going to kind of fake it here. There's that. And then... Uh... There we go. That's good enough. You get my drift. It's a sword. Bemis remembers them from the Punk USA comp. I'm, I'm a pretty big, I'm a pretty big fan of uh, Blake Swerzenbach and all his endeavors. Singer. Uh, he had a band called Jets to Brazil that was pretty awesome. I would never say they were punk, but they were pretty awesome. Um, and then he had a band called the Forgetters for a little bit. I got all the stuff that got leaked online. They they haven't really put anything out. They got an album out. James O'Barr is a really big fan of everything Blake does too. I was wearing a Jawbreaker shirt at a show and he came up to me and he's like, I'm friends with Blake. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, do you hear the Forgetters full length? And he goes, well, there is no full length. And I said, there absolutely is. I literally have it in the car right now. And, he was, and James O'Barr, like my first interaction with him was arguing whether or not the Forgetters full length was released. Because I was wearing a freaking Jawbreaker t-shirt. But apparently, according to him, him and Blake are real tight. I was like, that's cool. I'd like to meet Blake. I was on stage with him a few times, taking photos. I, I went to a Just a Brazil show, and some girl like pushed me on the stage way back. Oh, you know what? I have a photo from that show. Here, I'll show you guys. Um, I found it on Wikipedia, which is weird. Um, there's no bootlegs of the show. Um, let me see here. Uh, Jets to Brazil on Wiki. Uh, okay, here's this. Let me show you guys. This is real. Okay, so... Here, I'm going to make this full screen. Um, Penguin, did I tell you about that? No? I'll make this full screen. Uh, okay, so, yeah, Blake side band. When uh, Jawbreaker broke up, he formed Just Brazil with a bunch of other bands. Guys from... It was basically like a super group. Really good music. Uh, J Tree Records. Um, anyways, there's a photo right here. Uh, this is at... This is in Santa Cruz, California. Okay. Uh, 2001? Yeah, the Catalyst. It, they even named the file that. Right here. See this? I walked into the show. I, I was in Santa Cruz at the boardwalk. You recognize this dude right here? Who do you think that is? You know how I know? Because I know who this is. I'm not married to her anymore. But anyways, that's me right there. So like later on in the show, um, there's a staircase here. Went down and I ended up on the stage over here taking photos of Blake and the band. So uh, yeah, it, and it was a weird show. So um, before they played, it was that band, uh, they might be, might be Giants? And they played start to finish. They have an album that sounds like kids' music. It's really weird. It's an album called No, just N O with an exclamation mark. Uh, but yeah, might be giant. They had some some album they released called No, and they played the. That's all they played. They did not play that constant Constantinople song or whatever it is they have that got real popular on MTV. They didn't play none of that. They only played music from the No album. Uh, so they they opened, and then uh, yeah, then Blake Blake's here on the keyboard but um yeah true story man that's me right there it was weird and the only reason i found this photo was because um i got a buddy who told me he's like hey this i'm gonna send you some b-sides to this this album and i was like oh those never got released and he goes no no they did and i was like what 
So I, I was trying to do a little deep dive search and I ended up finding that. And I was like, oh shit, that's crazy. Because um, it was a really good show and I've always been looking for, you know, any sort of a soundboard recording or something from it. Um, and then when I found that, I was tripping balls. I was like, oh my God, that's me. That's me. It's so weird. Not very often that I find that. that panel um i'm gonna do the i'll do this one i think i'm gonna do a reverse thing on this though yeah let's get let's get weird i'm gonna do a reverse here just because the panel is kind of ah it needs some love so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a full black outline on these cats and then uh I found a uh, I found a video from ni 1999 or was it 2000 warped her uh, Tom who you guys see in chat once in a while Tom and I went to the Fresno Lake of it in California and I found a video where we're visible because we were in the very very front and it was during a Weezer performance, but like the it's really bad quality. So I never I was gonna send it to him. And I was like, ah, this sucks, dude. I I ran it through like a, a like a 4K upscaler, and it just like it was completely wrecked. Like there's no fixing this video, this footage. So I reached out to the person that has the original uh, tape, you know, and they haven't responded to me. I was like, I will pay you for like just a straight up transfer, not some 480 YouTube, uh, you know post um because i'm pretty sure it would if it is what i think it is it, it should be pretty clear um that was an interesting show though uh you guys saw that video where like uh grohl talking crap at andy right um at that one uh green day just released an album uh, it was the Insomniac album, I think. Um, they were playing Geek Stink Breath, and Mike Dirt got into it with Tom. They they got into a uh, cussing and a flipping off match. Tom's a fan; he was just fucking with them. Mike Dirt took it personal, I think. But yeah, so uh, I always wish that would surface. That was pretty amazing. Shell beans. Oh no, 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 KSSS, yes, yes, no. Oh my god, I can't tell that. I have to tell that one when I'm home alone. I don't need anyone walking in on that. couple stalkers in my day kind of a double standard I feel like it's like, like as a dude it's almost like weirdly okay but if I was a chick it would not be all right although mine was not all right which it really was but still
it's weird how that can happen. Gorgon's asking, was that a Pokemon ca cautionary? No, 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 no. Nope. Was not. Where did I... Where was I telling that at? Okay, it says this. Was that... That was over on... Was that on Jeremy's frame or was that on mine? I don't... I don't remember where I was talking about that. Um, but that's, like, that's straight up, like, real. Yeah. Oh, that was here. Okay. That was the one about my old coworker, or was that the one about the tree girl? Was that the tree girl, or was that the one hop in the fence? Was that the hop in the fence story? Because I have two stories. I don't know. I. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're talking about Kate. Yes, I know. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's another one. There's another story. Yes, that's us. I have another one that's crazier. So if you weren't around for that, I, I must have told it on, on uh, over Jeremy's. The other one that I'm thinking of. Um, yeah, that one's actually like actual, like legit, like call the police crazy. Two, three, four. There we go. What time is it? One eighteen. Got time. Might actually finish this page too. Uh, Scheist. and Hyman. All right, this is gonna go this way. His arm goes here. This one goes this way, so I need this black, this black. Okay. There's that. And there's that. And then there's that. All right. like I'm going to have to run the white out through this. So I may as well just let it run over. Right, and then this way. Down that way. This can get really confusing really quickly if you forget where you're at. And I did forget. Course corrected, so that's gonna go right there. There we go. Okay, and then that. Sure. 
Alright, that's better. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Derailing me with nightmare fuel, yes. Absolutely. Totes my goats. Yeah man, I had a I can't tell it right now, I'll tell it some other time. I'll tell it some other time. I'm not doing it right now. It'll be on another stream. It will uh, negatively <laughs> impact my art if I do. I'm laughing too much. All right. Okay, so might hit this with a little bit of splatter, I'm not really sure yet. Um, this is going to be the same way. He's kind of biffing it in the snow right there, so not sure yet. But I do know that I need to finish this today so I can move on, move on. Got to scan them, got to letter them, got to animate them, got to do my little ninja launch of people buying the book that want it, limited, make sure that a lot of people miss out on it, that's my style. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, did I finish my lunatic pages? Uh, no. I got I got a few left. I, uh, seven or eight. That's a huge book, though. Um, I think it's like fifty something pages. So I'm I'm down. I mean, I got I got like four fifths of it done. You know, like it's pretty much done. I feel like I feel like they're gonna have me do something else after that too. So we will see. Who knows? I just work here, man. I don't know nothing. All right, so there's that. Um, this one, I'm gonna do some splatter stuff too. I think. Yeah, let me do this. I'm just gonna hit the core area him. Then I'm gonna, I'll noodle it with uh, my other brush pen. I'm just getting his like skeletal area done because he's silhouetted here, so. Let's see. Ba, 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 Ink. Were you guys here the other day when I spilled my ink? Couldn't believe it. What a loser. I 
It was the first time I've ever spilled. I've never actually spilled ink before until that day. Couldn't believe it. I was like, what the hell's wrong with me? Get that credit card out. <laughs> that credit card ready? No, I use a uh, I use a 16 point uh, card uh, plastic top loader uh, that I've been using for the last like eight years. Same top loader. And I think I actually used it because I didn't have an expired credit card around me. Those are only credit cards I would use. If I had like an expired, you know, some expired, I would definitely use that. All right, I gotta flesh this out because obviously his anatomy is not that of a stick figure. He's got some some muckles, a little bit of muckleature. Damn, that foot looks goofy as hell. So I'm gonna shave that down. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hit that right there. What page is this? What should I write? It's page seven. So let me check something real quick. So it's page seven. Let me see page eight. I don't recall. So apparently there's 24 pages of printed work. Page one. Six is one with two pieces of paper that make the whole page. Seven. Oh, here's eight, nine. That's where he's still fighting. Okay. 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 That's good. Okay. All right. So I know what I need to do. Ah, uh, something I forgot. All right. So I'm going to do this and this. Here we go. All right. This brush pen is dying. All right. So there's that guy. Um, I'm going to use a regular brush pen for the other part. Genie boots. Yeah, yeah, they look, they look hella stupid, man. I can't, can't let that fly. There you go. It's got a little, little stabby stab thing going right there. All right. We're going to print it a little bit. I don't want that tip of this foot too sharp. That, that works better. Much better. And it's still too fat. Basically, I'm just shaving away his foot at this point. That's all right. Yeah, it works. That works. All right. 
Um, let's see here. Yeah, okay, I think, I think I, I think I know what I'm going to do here. Where is... Dondeo! There we go. Alright, it's got a little splattery pad there. I'm going to mask this with another sheet of paper. What we do in this house. Mask it with paper. Um, I can use this as a weight. That works. Um, I get the nice water for this. I'm good to go. And then I gotta do that top panel. I think I'll save that for last. I'm not gonna do that right this second. Um, I'll just jump to the other page. Let's see, 130. I got a little bit of time. Yeah, I gotta get some water for this. Here's my uh, 16 point card loader. Obviously, black splatter, black white. Uh, Wolf and Bear, how you doing? Uh, I'm going to get some water in my whiteout. <laughs> okay, so I got some water there. Um, this is this is basically the white ink version of this right here. These uh. Jay, what is it? Jay Ryan still here? I think it's a it's a kit of talky pin, brush pin, or whatever. You know, they got that little gasket. You take out the gasket and then you rescrew it on, and it opens the uh, it punctures and allows the ink there. This one is a white one. The white ink in this hella sucks. I never recommend the white it here, but I do like that it's wet, and then I can sometimes activate the pro white ink, which dries in this. And I've I've had this thing for two decades at this point this exact same uh acrylic painting whatever you know I, i've had this thing forever so um anyways yeah and i literally just use the pen and white out that is dried out this is pro white it's also a mixture of like the ph martin the proof bleed white whatever um which is uh got some right here this guy right here, I put a large dollop of this on there, and then I just, I like using white, thinned out white ink instead of water when I can, but I have none of that left. Here's the Higgins I would normally use, which should normally be white, but as you can see, it's bone dry. So this is just a white ink that is not very good, but I, don't, I like, I don't know, I just like using it instead of water. It makes, makes it feel more, a little more, like there was a little more attempt to make it, um, you know, keep the consistency, I guess. I don't know. I'm a weirdo. All right. So I'm going to do that. Make sure this thing stays covered. And really, I just want to hit it down here. I, I know it's not, it's not a whole lot, but it's something I need to do to this piece. So, and there's a little bit, this, this should take all of, two seconds should not be a crazy I'm not trying to overwork it just trying to give a little bit of like a you know he biffed it man like what do you expect so there you go all right so that's pretty good got a little bit of a tonal thing going on there uh it'll look cool in print that's all that i care about Cover up some of his uh, his witch's boot. All right, so there's that. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I can start that other stupid page. And then I'm done, man. Get this one. To... Actually, you know what? I can sign this one right now. I'm waiting. Uh, that was one thing. I put the signature off. Did not want to throw white splatter over it. And uh, yeah, some else. Um, usually I would tape it down, but I, you know, I don't care. This is just paper. This is masking. You can make it, make it into an airplane if you want. 
I'm also a weirdo because I like to use the 08s. I actually don't ink with these. I save them for signatures because I like the way the lines look with an 8. Uh, when I have one that's drying out, though, I'll use it for, like, outlines and stuff sometimes. But... It's my autograph right there. Okay, so yeah, this was kind of a quickie page. It wasn't too much going on. I'm probably gonna come in with some white there and do a little bit of something, something. Um, then this panel's not, this panel's laid out. I just need to come in and flesh it out. I'm gonna have a lot of that broken line detail going on with this ninja guy in the front though, for sure. And uh, this will be kind of masked off. I'll have a deleter line going straight down with the black this direction instead of this side of his face. That panel, so that'll be kind of cool. One was the eye to the right. We read left to right in the United States, so that's what that is. Here's my next page. Uh, it's pulling a sword out of that dude's spine. I'll work on this small panel. I think I can knock this out before I gotta go. Um, what time is it? 1.30? Yeah. I don't know if you guys ever used to do that. You could do, uh, yeah, I make paper airplanes. Something you can do. One, two, three, four. This one is scanned. This is not. So these ones are done. Got. Let's see. This guy's scanned. Okay. This is. All right. So, yeah, it's not bad. Um, who was asking about. So I got let's see here. one. I got some pages. Start working on that too. Let me see what's going on here. I got let's see. How many pages do I have for that? Here we go. All right, so you got one. These are ones I got to ink. I got one, two, three. This one's almost done. Here's four. This one's almost finished. I gotta finish the background. Um, and then I got like six. Oh, okay. Ten pages then. Yeah, I got like six pages. Um, I can hit this right here right now. But yeah, I got like six pages of this that I gotta um, print up in blue. I need to get more printer ink, man. Printer's like screaming at me now. I don't know who's been using my printer. But wasn't me. Well, I don't touch a printer in a while. But yeah, so um, there we go. So I'm talking about. Yeah, boy. All right. Let's get that. Guess what? I'm keeping it. That's what I do, man. I hijack shit. I make it messy. Alright, so I'll let that dry. I'll put this away. I don't think I need this right now. Maybe I do. Okay, so anyways, yeah. That's, that stuff. It's gonna go up. Got one panel left on that other page. One panel, uh, this one needs to be inked as well. Damn, that's a lot of detail on that. I'm not making enough on that thing, man. I'm trying to more next time. Okay, there's that. Uh, oh, no, Noah was sending over his uh, homework. He was, he was using my printer. Uh, awesome one got a uh, chicken from Kroger. I got, um, I got a, uh, oh God, what do you call it? Um, oh, meatloaf. I got a meatloaf from our store, like, right, like a bakery, like they make their own meatloaf stuff. And, um, dude, so, you know, you just throw it in the microwave for like four minutes or whatever, you know, it's like, it's already good to go. 
dude it was gross it was gross i was like this is terrible i am never buying this again and the weird thing is um like their mac and cheese and their like uh you know like their their uh any of the potato salad stuff or the regular um pasta salad stuff they make is fantastic um yeah man that 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 meatloaf was straight up ass i was like oh my god i'm never buying this again this is terrible like um i'm usually not picky you know what i'm saying it was it was gross though i was like this is i can't do this again man. this is the worst Okay, so I'm gonna I'll do this and then I'll end it. I'm gonna do this panel right here. It's a close-up of a face. And we're gonna end this crap. I'll end your suffering. I know you guys hate it. You guys hate my stream. Yeah, maybe next stream I'll do something more interesting. Like I'll work on, uh, maybe I'll work on one of those pages um, from that uh, that project. Pray for the sinner. Pray for the sinner. That's what it's called. Um, and those pages that I'm working on, by the way, they have not even announced that book. So I'm not even sure. I'm not supposed to be showing it off. But I've been doing it anyways. Because, you know, no one told me shit. The writer watches the channel because he's, he's popped up in chat. Uh, he's in real tight with the uh, the whole crew over there. The, uh, the Comics Elite crew. Um, he's writing quite a bit, quite a bit of stuff. He's got a, he's got some pretty cool um, like creator own character stuff going on, so I might I might do like the way that I did uh, Bascom, you know, like where I forced him to do a cover. I might do that to the writer over there. I'd be like, hey, dude, here's your cover. He's gonna be like, what? I'd be like, did I stutter? Here's your cover. Don't think I stuttered. I can't wait for Jay Ryan to launch. A project so I can give him his cover. Where's your variant, Jay? That's how I roll. It's something I learned. When you have stalkers, you have to be very assertive. knows what's up. I'll take that cover and you'll like it, Jay. Exactly. Um, what was I doing right here? What was I doing right here, Jay? Do you remember? I don't remember what I was doing. Alright. It's gonna go this way. Okay, guys. Uh, real talk. Um, my daughter likes to yell at me when I pick her up from school. I have to bring her a snack. What is the snack that I should bring her? Um, she does like Starbucks and she does like, uh, she loves, uh, Snicker bars. Um, she also likes cats. That's pretty much it. Oh, and, and I can't really get her a pastry from Starbucks because um, if it's room temperature, she then yells at me that it's not warm, that it's only room temperature and she hates it and she will not eat it. 
this is what she does. So and I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. Love her very much. She just, uh, she's very, she's very judgy with me. So let's see. Uh, meatloaf. Uh, fancy feasts. She doesn't like. Well, she, actually, she almost vom she refuses to feed the cat because she says the smell makes her want to vomit. Uh, meatloaf. I already ate it. It was gross. Brussels sprouts. What's up, Sumo? Someone said hi to Sumo. I don't even see Sumo here. Uh, Kenneth might be Rook for SSS says pot roast. Pingrid says bologna sandwich. I don't think she's ever had bologna. Um, I tried talking her into letting me buy a can of Spam so she could try it. And she threatened me. Oh, Pilk Milk. No. Uh, K-pop says she just likes yelling at you. I, this is our, This is a fact. Beef jerky and beer. Uh, Shelby's getting all this judgment back tenfold. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I didn't see Sumo. Where's Sumo at? Like, I literally don't see Sumo anywhere. Sumo, are you a fence sitter? She doesn't care, awesome one. She don't. She she would say, yeah, and why are you here late? That's not my problem, Dad. I already, I already know what, I already know what's, what's gonna happen here. Uh, Wolf and Bear says Snickers are very satisfying, satiating. Yes, I concur. They are good. Slim Jims. You have to dress up as much. Fuck that. I'll never get out of there, man. I know, like most of these kids, uh, they'd be like one in photo ops. They all have cell phones. You know what I'm saying? Like they all bring their phones to school. They all be taking pictures putting it on YouTube. Um, oh, Sumo's on his porch waiting for his food. He waits. Uh, okay, so this is bag of carrots. Ketchup chips and a bag... Oh, Bagged milk and ketchup chips. That sounds terrible. That's a punishment. Yeah, that's a punishment. I would never do that. That's... Isn't that like an Australian thing? Like, like milk that comes in bags? They, they like come in like colostomy bag sort of containers. I thought that was Australia. It's a very uh, new school approach. Sweet potato chips. Uh, she loves sour cream onion chips. Those are the chips. Uh, we actually have to take him away. Uh, she will try to, she'll destroy an entire bag and then she'll be like, I, I'm, I'm full, I don't want dinner. Um, squeeze bottles, oh no. Bag milk and ketchup chips on the hottest day of the earth. Nope. Chicken nuggies on a McDonald's cookie. <laughs> no. I can't do that. You guys are terrible. I'm over here asking you real advice. You just tell me to like. I know what it is. You want it. You want me to have more stories about getting yelled at. I know what this is. I know what this is. This isn't my first rodeo. I know a setup when I read one. All right. What time is it now? One fifty. I'm gonna have to go soon. I told you I'm going to finish this panel. When I'm done with this panel, that's it. Game over. Game over, man. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. I gotta go outside and get my cat. Plus Pilk, plus Pilk is that pickle milk, right? I'll see who has Pilk, I'll have to Google it. And then maybe uh, uh, of three packets of mustard, yellow mustard. Turkey soup water, just the water. Uh, Ludafisk, so, or it's loot fisk, Scandinavian dish of fish soaked in lye. Kids love it. I don't think she would like that. Um, I keep trying to get her to eat. Um, I have. Uh, oh God, my brain has just stopped right now. Anyways, I got some. I got some uh, cans of fermentation in the fridge right now, and she refuses. She won't. This is an elaborate system of pulleys and levers that lead Shelby to get yelled at, says Jay Ryan. <laughs> you better get your cat for Sumo gets it. Did Sumo ever grow a nose? Uh, uh, she never yells at me that she loves me. It's the opposite. Uh, Phil isn't here. Let me set a boba tea. She, you know what? She... She does love Bolo, you know, that's true. Uh, take her a plate of spaghetti. Sounds good. Should do that. Uh, you guys are suggesting basically everything she hates. Yeah, she would she would be mad. She would uh, She'd be pretty upset. She told um, the other day uh, apparently, she told my wife to break up with me so they could get more cats. That's that's where I'm at. That's where I sit with my daughter right now. She tried to convince her to break up with me so they could get cats. Because I'm allergic to cats. That that was her her reasoning is because dad's allergic to cats. So that's how we can get more. But you have to break up with them. <laughs> I was laughing when she told me that. Who hates spaghetti? My kid. I love spaghetti. Chef Boyardee ravioli will really hit the spot. BMS, I used to eat that uh, in high school uh, when I would finish, uh, usually scrimmage game, it would be baseball practice. I would literally go home, I'd crack open a ravioli, go grab a fork and go to town. Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't want to wait, you know, I didn't want to wait for it to heat up. Uh, no, 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 she, she's like nine years old, man. Like, it's, it's just, uh, uh, Shelby can be traded for more cats. Yes. Uh, no, no one knows. It's vicious. Yep. Yep, yep. All right, I'm going to finish this face, and then I'm going to kick y'all out so I can uh, go get yelled at. I'm going to go to the store first, though. i got to make sure I get, get a couple snacks. Uh, I mean, I, who am I kidding? I'm getting yelled at no matter what I, what I do. It doesn't matter. It's just life. All right.
Okay, I think that's pretty decent for that. I want to overdo it. Just negative space, shelves, negative space. Okay. Um, I think that pain was good. I'm not signing this till it's done, though. Kicking me out. What's that about? <laughs>